Buckeyes are heavy favorites in this game, so what, what are the goals for Iowa tonight? Obviously, keep getting the victory is the most important thing, but in doing so, I think the Hawks want to accomplish two things. First of all, they want to show as little as they possibly can and still get the win heading into the Big Ten season. And most importantly, they want to come out here as healthy as they can going to Mission State. We might see plain vanilla, as Hayden likes to say. It's the first road test for the Hawkeyes, and it's the home opener for the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa, and it's coming up. Stay with us. Tulsa, Oklahoma, 66 years old. This is the very first time a Big Ten team has played here, and what a night to do it. The weather conditions are ideal. 79 degrees, a mild wind out of the west, and clear skies. First game on artificial turf tonight for the Iowa Hawkeyes this season. The coaching matchup in this one, Hayden Fry. There he is in his 18th year, the fifth winningest active head coach in Division I. Dave Rader, in his ninth year, led the 91 Tulsa team to an Independence Bowl victory. The kickoff is coming up next. Ouch. Let's the ball roll through the end zone. Hawkeyes will start on the 20. <laughs> Quarterback for the Hawkeyes is Matt Sherman, the junior out of St. Ansgar, fifth in career passing at Iowa. Matt Sherman, still only a junior, already has a 12-4 record as a starter for the Hawkeyes. Has yet to throw an interception and has really moved this offense well in their first two games. He didn't get to throw the ball a lot against Arizona, but of course the Wildcats have that vaunted defense, and when you've got guys like Tavian Banks and Cedric Shaw in the backfield, you're going to use them as much as you can. First play from scrimmage. Hawkeyes on the 20. It's Tavian. Banks with a very short game, maybe a yard. Other starters for the Hawkeyes on offense. There's Tavian, the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. His big fullback is Michael Berger, Tim Dwight, Demo Odoms, and Chris Knipper on the outside. The offensive line is anchored by Ross Verba, Jeremy McKinney, Bill Reardon, Mike Goff, and Matt Reichel round out the line. And we do have an injured Hurricane on the field. You hate to see that after just the first play from scrimmage. And that is uh, Tim Martin. Tim Martin, the defensive tackle, is up. Hobbling a little bit. We'll see if he returns to the game. Nelson Van Ways will come in. So it'll be second and eight for the Hawkeyes. Tim Dwight and Damon Gibson are the wideouts. Backs in the eye. Flemister in motion. Tavian again. Out across the 25, across the 30, and he's got a first down. Paul, he's picking up right where he left off. Right where he left off last week, and so is Tulsa. Last week against Oklahoma State, they showed a strong tendency to play a lot of man in the back end. And the uh, first two snaps they've done as well. Man defense in the back. Golden Hurricane defensively, Sean O'Boyle leads the line. Salifa Abdullah, Tim Martin, and Ryan Farley. Chris Fowler is the linebacker along with Kazadi and Sparks. First and 10 on the 33 for the Hawkeyes. Movement on the line. A flag goes up. This is Cedric Shaw getting his first carry of the game. He takes it out to the 39 and will wait for the penalty. Good to see Cedric in there right away. He uh, sprained that ankle last week, and you know he's real quiet to us in the media about his injuries, but uh, obviously he's, he's healthy enough to play tonight. I think it would have taken a lot more than a sprained ankle, sprained ankle to keep uh, Cedric out of this game being so close to home for him. That's right. From Texas. He's got a lot of family in the stands tonight. There are the officials for tonight's game. Wally Wrighton is the uh, lead referee. Jim Boschowski, Ray Harrington, Carl Britt, Don Bauer, Henry Zaborniak, and Daryl Wabshaw. Yeah, it, would, it would take a, a cast for Cedric to sit this one out. And not a soft cast, a hard one. And this is the uh, rest of the Tulsa defense. In the secondary, Jeremy Bunch, the leading tackler for the Golden Hurricane, along with Terrence Joseph, Marshall Gordon, and Brian Self. Tulsa's defense does 
Uh, right now, they're averaging giving 288 yards per game on the ground. And if they were in the Big Ten, they would be dead last in that category. When your uh, leading tackler is a free safety, as we discussed, discussed earlier, Paul, that's really not a good sign. First and five. And this is Davian Banks. He's got another hole, and he's out to midfield. Just like we talked about, Keith, the, uh, the Hawkeyes don't want to show a whole lot, and if they can get by all night running Fabian Cedric off tackle, I don't think they'll say anything else. Here you see Matt Sherman carrying out his fakes real well, as I'm sure Matt will do all night. Tavian's going to follow his tight end, Zeron, who whiffs right there, but Tavian was still able to pick up the first down. Hayden's nickname when Tavian arrived on campus, uh, for Tavian he called him Magic, and we certainly learned why last week. 182 yards and three touchdowns against in-state rival Iowa State. Hawkeyes at midfield, Tavian gets hit behind the line of scrimmage, and you know what? Kazadi was there, but Tavian actually ran in to one of his own players. Take a look at this. One of his offensive linemen, Kazadi, with the penetration, and boom, he runs right into Jeremy McKinney. Jeremy McKinney got his first tackle this season. He was a former defensive tackle his first year. Banks loses four yards on the play. It'll be second and long for the Hawkeyes. This offensive line is young, and Jeremy is part of that youth. He's just a junior. Matt Reichel, a sophomore, and Goff, a junior. The only seniors are Ross Verba and Bill Reardon. Play action for Sherman. His first pass of the night, going deep for Damon Gibson. He makes a fantastic over-the-shoulder catch at the nine-yard line. This kid's turning into a game-breaker. Damon Gibson has really come on big the last two games for Iowa. And that was a tremendous play by Matt Sherman right there, on top of a good call by Don Patterson. That was a play action off of the uh, exact same running play that the Hawks have used the first four or five plays. Matt kept the ball, and rolling to his left to throw the ball to your left 50 yards in the air right on the dime like that is a tough throw to do, and that's why Matt's a special quarterback. 37 yards on the hookup. Sherman to Damon Gibson, the junior, who's already got two touchdown catches this season. The only Hawkeye to score in both games. First and goal. Opening possession for the Hawkeyes trying to get on the board right away. Cedric Shaw. Stuff just a yard past the line of scrimmage. His second carry of the night. Tulsa's defense down, down here inside their own 10-yard line. What they like to do is play a lot of man, and that's going to give Iowa's receivers, you know, one-on-one -on -one coverage, a chance for Matt, Tim Dwight, Damon Gibson, those guys to make some big plays. A guy like Tim Dwight sees man to man and he starts salivating. <laughs> He's got some speed and some moves. Aaron Granquist checks into the game for the Hawkeyes. Second and goal now in the eighth. Granquist and Banks in the backfield for Rashard Carter and Tim Dwight set right. To give us to Shaw inside the five. Touchdown, Touchdown. Hawkeyes. Cedric Shaw is in his 27th career touchdown, and the Hawkeyes have a 6-0 lead. You're going to see the, see the wide receiver come in here and get a block. You don't, know, you don't usually hear wide receivers getting a lot of good blocks. You didn't really see it there. But trust me, he was there. I don't think Iowa changed up their uh, running play there. They used one running play up and down the field. And like we talked about, if they can just do that, that's all we'll see tonight. Zach Bromert in for the extra point. I don't want to jinx him, but Zach, you're perfect in your Iowa career. 21 straight. Right down the middle. You bet. Automatic. They call him Little Rudy. He puts it through the uprights, and the guys have a 7 to nothing lead. If you're Tulsa, not a good sign that Iowa marches right down 80 yards and scores a touchdown. You know, if they want to get any kind of momentum going, they're the underdog, the Golden Hurricane. Uh, really didn't want to see that happen. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Hawkeyes march right down, said punches it in, and Iowa has a 7-0 lead over Tulsa. We are live at Skelly Stadium in Oklahoma. Don't forget, tickets are available for three of the Hawkeyes' remaining four home football games. The homecoming game October 5th against Michigan State is sold out, but there are tickets available for Ohio State, Northwestern, and Wisconsin. And this is Charlie Higgins on the return for Tulsa. Nice improv out across the 30-yard line. Not great coverage by the Hawkeyes on that play. The kickoff coach, Brett Bielman, will hope that the uh, next kickoff, which I'm sure there will be many of, will look better than that one. I don't think Brett will mind me saying that. 
you got a close personal relationship with Brett. That's allowed. By the way, back to the tickets. Uh, they cost $26 each, and they can be purchased over the phone by calling 1-800-IA-HAWKS. And another injured hurricane. There's the number, 1-800-IA-HAWKS. Tickets available for Ohio State, Northwestern, and Wisconsin. All three of those will be good games. Try to get an ID on this injured player. Hawkeyes marched down the field with relative ease. Just took seven plays in three minutes. Tavian Banks and Cedric Shaw got him there on the ground. But the big play, Sherman to Damon Gibson, 37-yard hookup. It was really a great call by Don Patterson because the Hawkeyes had used just one running play, and they had the play-action pass off of that running play, and Matt carried it out perfectly, and a great over-shoulder catch by Damon Gibson. Players obscured by the Tulsa trainers, and we can't identify who he is. The Hawkeyes come into this game 2-0. There's a good look at the head coach for Tulsa, Dave Rader, in his ninth year. And he's really a, he's really a hometown hero as the, the injured player now is identified, and it's Alan Blackman. But back to Dave Rader, the coach at Tulsa, Paul. He, uh, he grew up here, and I think he wants to stay here. He was an All-State quarterback in high school here in Tulsa. I uh, was a starting quarterback for a ball team here at the University of Tulsa. And I think this is really where he wants to be. He's got a lot of heart, a lot of soul, as you know, people like to say in this program. I don't think he's here as a stepping stone to another university. This is the university he loves, and I think he wants to stay here and get it turned around. Took his team to the uh, Freedom Bowl in 89 and the Independence Bowl in 91. They, they won that one, the Independence Bowl. So the Golden Hurricane will start on the 34-yard line, and who is the quarterback going to be? We don't know. We're finding out with you folks because they have a platoon situation, and it is John Fitzgerald. He will get the start this week. DeGar started last week. Fitzgerald, out of the shotgun, will be the starter in this one. And they will go back and forth, at least if the trend continues. Fitzgerald will throw right away. He's got Sullivan White solo, as they like to call him. And a nice pickup of about uh, eight yards. For Tulsa's sake, I would like to see them stick with one quarterback. It's such a tough situation for a quarterback to be successful anyway, but then to have to come in and out every series, it's really hard to get a rhythm going. I don't think it's fair to the quarterbacks that you really have in tryouts during the game. That's what spring football is for. That's what two days are for. That's right. His stats don't, don't stand out. Five of 19 for just 111 yards, but he does complete his first pass. And he's the young one. He's the sophomore, Troy DeGar, number one, whom we expect to see later as the senior. We're sharing time with Fitzgerald. Second and two on the 42. Play action. He's got a man. That's Mark Lippy, the tight end, and he's got a huge hole inside the Hawkeye 30-yard line. That's terrific play action by Tulsa quarterback Fitzgerald right there. I tell you what, the Golden Hurricane has had problems passing the ball in their first two games, and they're looking good early here tonight. Let's take a look at the Golden Hurricane offense. Doug Pasula is the center, along with Michael Rule, Brad Smith, Brian Newham, and Jason Mills on the offensive line. Reggie Williams had 130 yards against Oklahoma State last week, along with Charlie Higgins, Wes Coswell, Damon Savage, and Tony Fisher. This give is to Williams. He's a bruising back, and that's exactly how he gets down inside the 25. This kid will hit you. If we could jump back to the quarterback situation, Keith, I'm a little partial to quarterbacks here. Of course. If we can talk about that real quick. I think neither one of these quarterbacks has really jumped out and asserted themselves as a starter. And when that's the situation, I think you go with a younger guy. Defensively for the Hawkeyes, the sophomore Jared DeVries leads the line with Brett Chambers, Aaron Klein, Billy Ennis Inge, and John LaFleur starting tonight. Vernon Rollins, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week two weeks ago, along with fellow sophomore Matt Hughes. In the secondary, Damian Robinson, Atkins, Knight, and Cook. Damian has nine career interceptions. Second and three for the Hurricane. Coswell in motion. And there a whistle. The quarterback situation we were talking about, Paul. Uh, Fitzgerald was going to redshirt last year, but what happened was Troy DeGar was injured in the very first game of the season and was out for the year. So they pulled Fitzgerald off the redshirt list, enacted him, and then DeGar comes back this season. So it's obviously a tough call for Coach Rader. Do you go with the guy who, uh, you know, played most last year, or do you go with your senior? I think you go with the younger guy, because like I said, neither one has jumped out and asserted himself. So maybe, it obviously looks like Tulsa's going to take their lumps this year anyway, so go with the younger guy. There's much more upside. you got two years to grow with him. 
Movement on the line against the Golden Hurricane. That'll bring it back five yards. It'll be second and seven now for Tulsa. Hawkeyes lead, 7-0. Fitzgerald out of the shotgun. Time to throw. Overthrows his intended receiver, Wes Coswell. That was representative right there of how Tulsa's passing game has been passing game has been the first two games this season. They've completed only 33% of their passes, and their quarterback rating, their passing efficiency rating combined is only 71.4, which if they were in the Big Ten, just like the rushing defense, would be dead last. They have had success, relative success, running the football this year with the sophomore Reggie Williams and Solomon White, the senior tailback. They're going to throw again, however, Fitzgerald. Over the middle, he's got his man, Damon Savage, breaks one tackle and extends himself down to the six-yard line. Savage, his sixth reception on the year, he's now over 100 yards for the season. We're going to see good execution right here by Tulsa, but we're also going to see some poor execution by Iowa. They complete the pass, and Kerry Cook's normally a very reliable tackle. Misses the tackle right there, gives him an extra few yards. 20 yards, in fact. Total on the reception there by Damon Savage. And Tulsa's marching right down on this Iowa defense, which looks so impressive in the first two games of the year. This is Reggie Williams, and he is stood up by a host of Hawkeyes. I think one of the things the Hawkeye coaches feared after two big emotional games, he got the season over, and then the traditional rival with Iowa State was a little letdown coming into this game before the Big Ten season. Maybe we're seeing a little bit of that with the defense. There's a good look at Vernon Rollins, and there's Billy Ennisinge. He needs to work on his arms. They're not quite big enough there, Paul. Not quite as Get big him as in the weight room. Yeah. Second and goal now. On the nine. Fitzgerald. Oh, here comes Billy Anderson, and he's got a huge sack for the Hawks. That's where the quarterback needs to have an extra set of eyes in the back of his head. The quarterback can only do so much out there. He can't respond, can't be responsible for this right here. Left side of the line with a complete breakdown, and that's what happens right there. A loss of 13. Billy heard me uh, dissing his muscular arms, I suppose, and wanted to make a play. <laughs> Billy actually took it a little easy on him. I think he could have hit him a little bit harder than that. Quarterbacks appreciate that, don't that's they, right. Paul? That was nice of him. Problems now for Tulsa. This is a third and 22. Third and goal. Fitzgerald. Steps up in the pocket, over the middle. He had a man, Coswell, but Tommy Knight delivered a huge hit. Fitzgerald really couldn't have done a much better job right there. He made a good read and threw a great ball. Threw it right where he wanted to put it. But Tommy Knight, he's a senior, he's a captain. These are the type of plays they expect him to make. Good throw. Tommy, Tommy breaks it up. Oh. Good read, good throw. Tommy welcomes in the Big Ten style football. They can be physical from what I hear. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt for James Anderson, the junior, who is four of six in field goals this season. Kick is up. And it's good. The Tulsa crowd likes it. They march down on their winning possession and score. And we've got a 7-3 ball game with 8-16 left here in the first quarter. Come back to Skelly Stadium right after this. Incorporated any use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. Did you hear that, Paul? I got it. Okay. Seven to three, Hawkeyes lead. Tulsa kicking off, and Tim Dwight lets it sail way over his head. A lot of muscle behind that one. Hawkeyes will start on the 20. I'm sure Tulsa's a little disappointed they didn't stick it in the end zone there, but I think they got to be happy with the fact they didn't go three and out. They came right down, drove the ball down on the Iowa defense. A lot of people might have thought they would have gone three and out, but they made a statement right there, even though they didn't get the six. You, you take the one big sack away by Billy Ennis-Inch, and Tulsa's real happy with that drive. They Very happy. Demo Odoms checks in for the Hawkeyes. Here comes Matt Sherman. Hawkeyes and we'll see so if Iowa can counter. Sorry, Paul. Me. Keith, Hawkeyes so far this season are showing a heavy tendency to run the ball in first down about 70% of the time. They're running the ball. I think this would be a good time to go a little play action, mix it up, maybe catch them off guard. here by Sherman. We'll see what happens. It's Katavian Banks, and he's got a big hole. It's obvious on this side of the ball, when the Hawkeyes have it, the, uh, the battle of the trenches is being won by Iowa. Take a look at this hole here, Paul. I think the Hawkeyes know that they're going to be dominant up front right there, and look at that hole right there. Keith, you might have been able to pick up a few yards there. I don't know if you could have absorbed that hit, but you could have gone through the hole. 
I'd be crying for mom after that hit. But that is their leading tackler down on the field, their yeah. free safety. Jeremy Bunch, the senior, is down, and that is the third Tulsa player down here in less than seven minutes of football. There's the scoring drive for the Golden Hurricane. Capped off by a 37-yard field goal from the foot of James Anderson. We've got a 7-3 game. Penn State, 41. Hawkeyes come into this one 2-0. Notre Dame, 27. With wins over Arizona and Iowa State. And we're going to take another look at this injury here, Paul. Going low on Tavian Banks. And it looks like it's his arm. It's tough to tell exactly what that is from up here. His, uh, he's favoring, I believe, his arm there, and it really got pinned underneath when he landed on that turf. And we were down there on the field earlier. It's actually pretty good turf, but it is artificial turf, and not a lot of football players are fond of it. Uh, from a turf standpoint, it's actually not that bad, but any turf is bad turf, according to most football players. And I'm sure that the fact that this game is being played on turf doesn't help the fact that there have been three people hurt. I'm sure it's got something to do with it. Hawkeyes are having success running the ball here today. Tulsa not really, but they used pass plays in their first drive of the game. Hayden liked what his offense did in the first drive, but I don't think he's real pleased with the defensive performance on their first trip out there. No, Bobby Elliott and his staff can't be too happy about it, but the game's still early. Maybe it'll serve as a wake-up call to wake them up like we talked about. Maybe they're a little, a little bit down after those first two big games. Hey, if anybody can motivate a, a football team, Bobby Elliott, uh, the guy gets a little fired up at times, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Bobby's a very fiery personality, perfect defensive coach. I don't know how he survived a year away from the sidelines, but he did, and he's returned to the Hawkeyes as the defensive coordinator. And I know Hayden and the, all the players are very happy to have him back. So Jeremy Bunch is assisted off the field. Sherman will rally the troops here. Here It'll be second and two for the Hawks. Going to echo with my thoughts I had just a minute ago. Second and two, the Hawks have a heavy tendency to run. Maybe a little play action. Throw a little pass here because everybody's looking for a run. Davian Banks, the tailback. And it's a reverse. Tim Dwight has it. He stumbles on the turf, but he still can pick up some nice yardage here. Look at that hop, and he's out to the 39. He went straight over Marshall Gordon. I think that's a great call by the Iowa Hawkeyes. Tim Dwight has been touching the ball far too little. He's too good a player to be only getting the ball three to four times a game, and it's great that they're getting him involved in the running game. Got had the ice on Timmy there. Dwight here. He had a little trouble with the handoff, but he regains his balance. I think, I think if he would have got one more block out here, he could turn it outside because I know there's nobody on Tulsa's defense that can keep up with him down the sideline. But that's good to see they're getting the ball in the running situation. First down for the Hawkeyes. Timmy now. Set left. Backs in the eye. Banks. Another huge hole. Hawkeyes are really dominating up front. I think that we all talk about Tavian Banks and Cedric Shaw, and they're both great. But we got to give a little credit to Frank Reducci. He was under a little heat his first couple of years here, but the offensive line has really been a strength on the Iowa team in the last couple of years, and I think we need to give him a lot of credit for that. And it was a big question mark, you know, quite frankly, heading into the season with the loss of Matt Purdy and Casey Wigman. And, and uh, you know, they, they certainly pushed Iowa State off the ball last week, and I think they're do doing an even better job here tonight. Frank's definitely earned, earned his players' respect. They all want to play hard for him, and he's, I think he's one of the bright coaches in the Big Ten. Davian already has 40 yards tonight. Play action now. Sherman's got it. Under heavy pressure. The pass is deflected and almost picked off there by Josh Martin. Josh had a chance. His eyes were as big as saucers. The football was just rolling down his chest. Hawks had no gain on that play, but it could have been a lot worse. Matt, he carries out his fake so well, sometimes he doesn't really see the rush, and that happened right there, but he did a good job of getting away, and I guess that was a little closer to an inter <laughs> interception than I thought, but those big guys usually don't have such good hands. Rich Young was the hurricane applying the pressure there to flush Sherman out of the pocket. Second and 10 for Iowa at the 50. <laughs> I think that was on Rice with the left guard. I think Reichel was confused. Did, did Sherman confuse him with his count there? Or? Dead ball, come on. Ball start offense. Still second down. Yeah, they are going to call it on Reichel, the sophomore. Boom. Yep, right there. He's not a guy you would expect to get confused. I think Matt has a 4.1 grade point, actually. Ooh. 
So Matt would have to try pretty hard to confuse him. I don't know if Matt has it in him to uh, confuse a guy like that. Now, where I'm from, Paul, how do you get a 4.1? Isn't that more than perfect? You get, you get 4.3 points for an A+. Plus. Oh, A pluses, huh? You would know that because you never uh, had No, one. extremely unfamiliar with that. Sherman gives it to Banks. Tavian fumbles the football but recovers back on the 44-yard line. Now the Iowa offense is starting to sputter here a little bit. Let's take another look at this one. Hawks didn't have much of a game there, but there was a nice double team on number 73. You see right there, there would be a hole if 76 hadn't had the good effort come off Mike Berger's block. Mike Berger's got to cut him and get him down. 76 is Neil Whitworth. He, in effect, caused that fumble. Here's a third and 15 for the Hawkeyes. Skelly Stadium is not sold out, but they're making a lot of noise for the first time tonight. I would say there are at least 30,000 folks here tonight for the home opener. Sherman back to pass. Gibson and Dwight running routes, and Sherman can't do anything but fumble the football back on the 26-yard line, and we'll find out who has it. Either way, it's bad, bad news for Iowa. Hawkeyes Hawk catch a break there by getting the ball back. That could have been a catastrophe, giving it up on their own 25-yard line. Salifa Abdullah in on that play. This is the coverage sack right here. Matt really had some time. He doesn't look like it right there, but he had a, at least a second back there in the pocket, and there was really nobody open. On third and 15, the DBs aren't going to be surprised by a pass, and any kind of defense in the country should be able to have some good coverage on third down and 15. Sean O'Boyle was the man who got to Sherman, and it's a weak punt by Nick Gallery. Bounces out at the 43-yard line. And the Golden Hurricane will get it back. It's also after their first victory of the season. They came in 0-2 with losses to SMU and Oklahoma State, but they looked pretty good early against the Hawkeyes. 7-3 Iowa, five minutes left in the first quarter. It doesn't matter where you go. We're in Tulsa, but you will find Hawkeye fans. Hawk fans everywhere, Keith. They come out of the woodwork, I think. Golden Hurricane gets the ball back here. First and 10 on the 43. Fitzgerald still in for the Golden Hurricane. And it's a complete pass out across midfield. That's Tony Fisher, big tight end for the completion. I talked about Iowa having a tendency to run a lot on first down. Tulsa did too, and they're doing a great job of mixing it up. I think they've thrown the ball quite a bit more than they've run. This is a great scheme by Tulsa. They fake, they fake the quick screen to one side and drag the tight end across the middle. Gets hit hard, but he still picks up a first down. Fitzgerald looking pretty sharp here. Under five minutes in the first quarter. 106 yards for the Hawkeyes. Nearly 80 for Tulsa. Fitzgerald, the quick handoff to Williams. Not much there. Williams is really their horse in the backfield. As we mentioned, Tulsa's throwing the ball here early, but Reggie can run it. He's had uh, five 100-yard rushing games in just the nine games he's played for Tulsa. Just a sophomore, averaging about 88 a game. A very different back, it seems, from a guy like Tavian or even Cedric. This guy just seems to lower his head and try to run guys over. Cedric and Tavian are capable of that, but they seem to have a little more finesse in their style. Second and seven. Fitzgerald quickly out to Jason Bennett, and he's got a first down. Hawkeyes have been playing a soft, a soft zone so far. What I mean by soft zone is their cornerbacks are playing off the receivers, and that's the type of thing you expose right there. Fitzgerald does a good job of it. Sees there's a soft corner. There's about eight or nine yards in front of that corner. It's been open every play. This is the first time that Tulsa's exposed it. Smart play by the junior wingback, and he's from Tulsa. A lot of Oklahomans on this roster, as you might imagine. His fourth reception of the year. And the chains move again. Just about even in first downs. This is Williams. Stretches out to the 30. Picks up three. There's a 
good look at Reggie. Had 131 yards against Oklahoma State last week. He was their lone weapon. Second and seven. Fitzgerald play action. Steps up. West Coswell. Inside the 15. The little guy gets up. Iowa looks to be committed this far to playing a zone defense against Tulsa. And the quarterback, Fitzgerald, has been doing a good job of finding the open spots and delivering the ball right where he needs to. Good play action there to hold the linebackers. Receiver crawls in behind the linebackers and in between the defensive backs, doing a great job of finding the openings in those zone. And Fitzgerald, although he has poor numbers coming in this game, has looked great. He's standing tall in the pocket and throwing the ball well. West, not a big guy, 5'8", and that's a, that's a liberal 5'8", as they are wont to do in media guys. But a great grab there. A botched snap on that play. And I believe the center just plopped himself on the football. Doug Pasula never even got it, really, to Fitzgerald. They told us when we got here, Paul, that Tulsa had spent all week working on the pass because it hadn't been working for them, and they knew if they if they wanted to have a chance against the Hawkeyes, they'd have to, they'd have to throw it. And you got to give them a good grade thus far. It certainly looks like they uh, did a good job of working on it. I think that shows a lot of respect for Iowa's run game, how well their rush defense has been that the Tulsa offense felt that they could not run the ball, that their only chance was to pass. Chuck Long and Hayden Fry commiserating here on second down. Fitzgerald goes to the end zone. West Coswell, touchdown, Hurricane. And Tulsa, winless, unranked, has a lead on the undefeated and 19th-ranked Hawkeyes. Great throw and catch right there by the Tulsa offense. A very, very basic scheme. We can see it right here, a scheme every, every team in the country uses. You can't see it now, but they'll run about a five-yard stop and then run a flag in behind him. Plus, Atkins gets sucked up a little bit on the uh, on the stop route in front of him. Leaves the flag route coming in behind him wide open. Great catch right there. That was a historical moment there for Tulsa, and I'll tell you why, as the extra point is good by James Anderson. That is their first touchdown pass in 29 quarters. That's Dates back to mid-season last year. They finally throw a ball into the end zone, and they've got a lead on the Hawkeyes, 10-7. Confidence would be a word I would use now. If we could take a look at this replay, the key to this play working is the corner jumping on the stop route. You can't see it too well right there. But it did hold the defensive backs off, off long enough to allow Caswell to get open in the end zone. It's amazing that a school like Tulsa has had such a poor record throwing the ball this season. They've had such great quarterbacks and receivers through the years. T.J. Rubley from Davenport, Iowa. Went up to Kinnick Stadium a, couple, a few years ago and had a, had a great game with uh, Dan Bitson, one of the leading receivers in the country that year. And just three years ago, my senior year, Gus Farratt, he's now starting quarterback for the Washington Redskins, threw a lot of balls to Chris Penn, who uh, has been scoring touchdowns for the Kansas City Chiefs this season. So it's uh, unique that Tulsa is not having success throwing the ball. Until tonight. <laughs> you know? Until tonight. Man. Coswell, by the way, missed last year with an injury. However, he finished this one. 13 yards from Fitzgerald, eight plays, 57 yard total, two minutes, 46 seconds. And Iowa fans might be a tad shocked at this point. Not at all what we expected. That kickoff out of bounds, and they'll throw the flag there on Mr. Anderson. It's also lost their season opener to SMU 17-10 and 30 to 9 to Oklahoma State last week. Both of those games were on the road. Ball was placed at the 35 yard line. First and 10. And they're going to call offsides here on uh, Tulsa. The ball out of bounds, obviously, and it, it, possession will start on the 35. This may, be, may not be what Hawk fans expected or wanted for that matter. But it may turn out to be uh, a positive for the Hawkeyes if they can bounce back in this adversity because there's going to be a lot of times in the season where in situations like this in the Big Ten, maybe this would be good practice for them. Sherman swings it out to Cedric Shaw. He can't hang on. He saw Terrence Joseph. One thing that Tulsa is doing that they have not done up to this game is along with playing man, they're bringing backers right there. You see number 56 coming. Tulsa has a unique way of playing man defense up to this game. They would play man in the back end, but they would not bring any linebackers. 
until this game. They're bringing a lot of pressure along with playing man in the back end, which is the way most teams normally play it anyway. Said New Joseph was coming in hard, and that can make it a little bit more difficult to catch a pass. The pitch to Shaw. Finds a hole and then stumbles on the turf. Back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long for the Hawks. This is a slippery turf here in Tulsa. You'll see right here, Cedric, I don't know if he would have been able to gain much anyway. He didn't have a chance here. He goes down, slips on the turf. And this is the type of situation, if you're Don Patterson, the offensive corner, you don't want to face. Third down and 10, it's a tough call to make. Cedric's uh, left ankle is the one that sprained. He slipped there on the right ankle, so I don't think that had anything to do with the injury and everything to do with the turf. Third and 10 for the Hawks. Backs are split. Damon Gibson, Tim Dwight, the wideouts. Dwight is over the middle. He tries to go to Gibson, however, and he can't hang on. Covered on the play by Terrence Joseph, who's having a real nice series, and the Hawkeyes will have to punt. Once again, on the last third down and long situation, there really wasn't that much for Matt to go to right there. And the situation was obvious passing down. A good defense is just going to rush a couple guys and drop the rest of them into coverage. And the Hawkeyes only had three receivers out. I think Tulsa had seven defenders back. Three on seven is not a good ratio. Sherman's last three passes have been deflected, and the last two have been dropped. So it may not be Matt's fault. And Spencer Braggs would not call a fair catch. Didn't see him, or did he? And is that what the flags are about here? Tim Dwight was all over him. <laughs> He's always the first one down there. I think Timmy was up a little bit too close there. So they'll call it on... Timmy, 41-yard punt from Nick Gallery, the Big Ten's leading punter. Take another look. One of the things that makes Tim such a special player is his aggressiveness, but right there you see it get him into a little bit of trouble. Timmy in the very first game against Arizona, I'm sure a lot of Hawkeye fans saw that play on the punt coverage, got down there and just licked one of the Wildcats. They called a, called a flag on him, and a lot of folks thought that it wasn't necessarily a... Interference with the opportunity. Five-yard penalty on the kicking team. First Trying to hear from Wally right in here. And they will call that foul on Dwight. It'll be a first down for Tulsa on the 29-yard line. But anyway, Timmy laid this, laid this guy out for Arizona. A lot of folks thought it was a fair play, but I think the referees were so shocked that someone was down there that quickly. They had to throw the play. They feel bad for the kid. A sympathy call, huh? Yep. Just a personal opinion, of course. Fitzgerald still in, and the pitch to Solomon White. Solomon uses his blocker as well and gets out to the 35-yard line. Paul, we were expecting the platoon situation, and Fitzgerald is staying in the game here, at least for the first three series. I think Dave Rader might have been listening to our broadcast early on and said that heard what we said. But you see here, it's a nice hole. He didn't pick up the first down, but this is what an offensive coordinator wants. Second and short is an easy call to make. Second down and four to be exact. You saw Fitzgerald's numbers flashed up on the screen. Seven and nine for 109 yards. It's an awfully good start. Fitzgerald will give it to White again, and he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. John LaFleur, among others there. Johnny getting his first start of the season tonight. Makes a nice play there. John LaFleur is in the long line of great Iowa defensive linemen from the state of Iowa, going back to Jeff Drost, uh, Jeff Keppel. The list just goes on and on of people that Coach McCartney, he started that tradition. And John Austin is continuing it with uh, John LaFleur and Jared DeVries. Coach McCartney victorious today in Ames over the UNI Panthers. A win the Cyclones desperately needed. Eight seconds left in the quarter. Fitzgerald under pressure. Locked it up. Was Atkins had the interception and then was pushed away on the play by Brian Noonan. Three seconds left here in the quarter. Who was that intended for, White? I don't know. Screen isn't usually a call that is a good one on, on uh, third down. You normally see it when a team is expecting, expecting the rush. Blez had both of his paws on the football there and then just took a push. Kirk Myrick back to punt for Tulsa. Goes over the middle here and Dwight takes it at the 26 yard line. He's upended out at the 35 and that's why where the Hawkeyes will start their next series trailing Tulsa 10 to 7. We'll be back after these messages from our local stations. And the 
give is to Berger, who has just stood up. Is Tulsa defense up to the task here on this first and goal series thus far? I look for the Hawks to get into one of these formations where they have a strong tendency to run like this now on third down and do a little play action pass, maybe drag one of the tight ends or one of the faking backs across the field in the corner of the end zone. Last time the Hawkeyes were on turf was the Sun Bowl in El Paso, and uh, that play worked very well for him. Michael Berger found the end zone against the Huskies, but he certainly didn't there. Third and four here, Paul. Hawkeyes trailing 10-7, two minutes into the second quarter. Banks and Berger in the backfield. Dwight in motion, checks back. Sherman to throw to Tim Dwight. Touchdown. Great call by Don Patterson right there. He knows that Timmy Dwight can't be covered by anyone in the Tulsa secondary. And to make it even worse, he drags him across the formation, then brings it back, confuses him a little bit. Second touchdown of the season for Timmy, his first touchdown catch of the year. A great look at this one. Great fundamentals right there by Matt Sherman. Not, not all quarterbacks can throw it to their left. Matt does a good job of turning his hips and his shoulders around, find a strike in there to Timmy. So the Hawkeyes have reclaimed the lead. And let's see if they can tack on one more. Zach Brommer, now 22 consecutive point after touchdowns. Make it 23. Hawkeyes have reclaimed the lead here at Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Keith Blyer and Paul Burmeister coming back right after this. Quarter 15 to nothing, and they draw first blood again with the touchdown pass from Sherman to Tim Dwight. They've got a 14-10 lead, and Dave Raider's got to keep his team motivated because they're in this game, but the Hawkeyes seem to own second quarters. Hayden Fry, on the other hand, is glad to see his team score because uh, he had a lump in his throat for a while there, trailing a winless Golden Hurricane team. On the return there for Tulsa and breaking a tackle is Charlie Higgins. Takes it out to nearly the 25-yard line. There's the drive in five plays, just two minutes and eight seconds. And 50 of those 65 yards provided by a one Cedric Shaw. On a big run down the sidelines, he would have scored if it were not for Jeremy Bunch. Who's got the edge in rushing, Paul? Um, I'm going to say Iowa. have to say Iowa. Okay. Barely. We finally agree on something. <laughs> First and 10 on the 24-yard line. Fitzgerald to Bennett. Tackled by Knight, but not before a first down. It's quick out patterns are working for Tulsa tonight, aren't they? Especially with this Bennett kid. You really have to have confidence in your quarterback to make a call like that. It's a long throw across the field, tight coverage. And uh, he's really doing a great job of delivering the ball. I can't believe his numbers coming into the game because he looks like a good quarterback to me. Once again, he took advantage of soft corners by Iowa. About 20% completion rate coming into this game, and I think he's hovering around 80 or 85% in his passing tonight. First and 10. Fitzgerald, quick drop. West Coswell is open, and he stumbles at midfield. I'll tell you what, that stumble sure helped the Hawkeyes because he had a seam there right across the middle. Once again, he's throwing strikes, and the Hawkeyes are still committed to playing his own. Standing tall in the pocket, delivers just the perfect strike. You can't tell from that from that angle, but he threw that ball before he came out of the cut, and that's what a good quarterback's going to do. A tackle on the play there by the Tulsa logo at midfield. I think that flag... I think Fitzgerald's been helped by the fact that I think he, he must have been told before the game that he was going to go the whole distance, that this was his game. That's got to help his confidence. I think you're right, Paul. I really do. Fitzgerald over the middle here to, over the outside, sorry, to Higgins. And Higgins might be just shy of the first down. Another great great play here by Fitzgerald. And I'm, I'm impressed by this play just as much as any other good balls he's thrown because he hit his third receiver coming out of the backfield. He's only a sophomore, and a lot of times a sophomore has a tendency to force the ball to his first or second receiver. He saw the first or second guy covered and dumped the ball to his third guy. Great patience by the sophomore quarterback. He's also getting an awful lot of time up front. Yes, he is, yeah. Iowa's defensive line, led by Jared DeVries, Bill and the Sims. I don't think we called their name at all since Billy made that sack early on. Tulsa's offensive line, which we hadn't heard much about, is doing a great job of holding out Iowa's 
pass rushers. And, and Tulsa's receivers aren't necessarily catching these balls in traffic. They've got some room to work. So Iowa's defense is uh, is looking suspect tonight. Now, they obviously have plenty of time to turn it around, and they've got a four-point lead here. But I think Jared DeVries really has to pick it up. He's been Iowa's best pass rusher last part of last season, first part of this season. He's really a special player, only a sophomore. He's going to be, I think, just fantastic, as good any D lineman as, as we've ever had here under Hayden Fry. But he's got to pick it up tonight. Dave Rader waiting for the markings and getting ready to send in a play here. 11.53 left in the second quarter, and there is the man that Paul says needs to step it up here along with 56 there, Vernon Rollins. They really are the stars of this defensive unit. They're only sophomores, but they, they're giving up yardage tonight. Jared has had as impressive first couple years as any D lineman has had at Iowa. And like I mentioned before, I think he's going to be as good as Mike Wells, as good as any of the great D linemen we've had here. He's one of those sophomores that looked like a senior when he first got to campus. Fitzgerald at the 50-yard line, a wobbler out left to Jason Bennett. Another reception for him. And yet again, Paul, Bennett was wide open. It was the exact same play we saw the play earlier. Just they switched sides of the field and ran it the other way. The first two guys recovered. And Fitzgerald threw an ugly ball, but you don't get points for throwing spirals. All that matters is the end result. Sees the first two guys are covered and has poor fundamentals there, but the important thing is he got it out there to the open guy and a good pickup. Very smart football there because the Hawkeyes came there with a cornerback blitz. Kerry Cooks was deep in the backfield there, being held off by one arm. Tulsa still ends up with a first down. 12 yards on that hookup, and they are now at the 29-yard line. Again to throw. Coswell off his knee. Boink and out of bounds. That was a great play call right there. The Hawks were in a man coverage. They drag one guy across the field and try to set a pick, although a pick is illegal. There are ways of getting around that. They set a little pick there and had the guy open, but not a great pass, but still should have been caught. Fitzgerald's numbers still look good. 11 of 15 for 151 yards. And Tulsa has had the edge through the air in this game. 151 to 49, total yardage. Hawks playing some straight man coverage here. Second and 10. Fitzgerald again, steps up, drops it off to Coswell, first down, and more inside the 15. I take that back, the Hawks showed man and stemmed back into his zone, and uh, Fitzgerald wasn't fooled. I was fooled, but uh, he wasn't. Does a good job here, stepping up in the pocket, feels the heat. Just dumps it off there. Very smart play. Nice catch. Very good catch by Caswell there, but another great play by Fitzgerald. Very heady, stepping up in the pocket. Knows where his dump-off man is and gets the ball to him. And he's wide open again. There was uh, no one there on Wes. And the Golden Hurricane had the ball on the Iowa 13. Reggie Williams. A big hit by Damian Robinson, but he stayed up. Now, how exactly did Williams take that punishment, stay up, and gain an extra yard? It's a sign of a great back right there is how many yards they can make after the first hit. And that was a big first hit. He stayed up, got a couple extra yards. Watch the hit he takes here from Damian. Number three, bottom Let's of your screen. It. Actually, it's Kerry Cooks. Kerry and then and boom. Damian. And then that's good hard running right there. That's a good play by Vernon Rollins, right? Oh, that's Corey Brown. Corey Brown in the game. I was just looking there at my roster, and he is not on the uh, the numerical roster I have, but Corey's in, and uh, he's Vernon young. Rollins gives him a nice tap there. Young guy. I think he's from Houston, and uh, that might have been the first big plays made for the Hawks. I've heard the coaches say a lot of good things about him, and this is the first time he's actually come in and done it in the game. It'll be third and seven here for Tulsa on the 11-yard line. Dave Rader has never beat the Hawkeyes. He's 0-2. Of, of course, those two games were at Kinnick. And for one of them, Paul Burmeister was the opposing quarterback. So, how are you going to beat that? Third and seven. Fitzgerald rolling out of the pocket to Vries. Heavy pressure into the end zone. Anybody's ball. And a Damian got his hands on it. Incomplete. This is a play right here that's really designed to work against man defense. And the Hawks are playing the zone. So... Luckily, we guess right and they guess wrong. Hawkeye sports fans who are surfing the World Wide Web should make a point to check out HawkeyeSports.com. It's the official World Wide website of the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
It has facts, quotes, information, stats, and beginning today, a chance to win 30 tickets to the Hawkeyes' November 9th date with the Northwestern Wildcats. Check it out, HawkeyeSports.com, the official worldwide website of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Field goal attempt here for Tulsa from 27 yards, and it's no good. James Anderson, check that, Kirk, or Anderson, yes, Anderson with the missed field goal. And the Hawkeyes will take the ball over, dodging a bullet as Tulsa moved the ball well yet again. Iowa leads 14-10, 9.56 left in the second quarter. Kelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Nice crowd on hand, not a sellout. Capacity here about 40,000, just over 40 grand. And I think uh, they've got about 30 here in the stands tonight. It's the home opener for the Tulsa crowd. And this is the uh, first time a Big Ten team has played here. This is about as big as it gets for Tulsa football fans to see a Big Ten team come in. Cedric Shaw cuts back after running left and improvises for a few yards. Iowa's first road game of the season, of course, and their first test on artificial turf. And they have exploited a little bit of their speed on the harder surface here today with Cedric Shaw, a long run and a touchdown, and Timmy Dwight cutting back across the field in motion, losing his defender. Once again, a formation here. The Hawks run the ball out of almost every time. Shaw, nice again. lead block by Berger, and he's out at the 35-yard line. Michael Berger certainly contained his man on that play. He did a great job there doing what he was supposed to do, knocking the first guy down and clearing the corner out for Cedric. And it's not very often you see a running back run for over 10 yards and not even be touched. Watch Mike Berger right here, the fullback. There's a block by Zeron Flemister, the tight end. And here comes Mike Berger's block, the fullback. Kicks him out of there just like he's supposed to. Would make Paul Cuyava, David Hudson, Richard Bass, all the old good blocking backs for the Hawks, make them very proud. Cedric played it safe on that one. I'm surprised knowing his nature, he didn't try to make a move there and tuck it inside, try to go down the sidelines. I'm going to guess this is going to be a sweep to the left now. They're pretty good over the left side. Tavian takes a hit. Almost a helicopter move there in midair out to the 40-yard line. One thing Coach Fry has always liked to say is scratch where it itches, and when he finds something that's working, he's going to run it to death. More often than not, Tavian Banks and Cedric Shaw are working. One of the reasons the Iowa running game is so good is because of the strength and condition of the offensive line up front. Paul Longo and Parker Wildeman have done a fantastic job in the weight room getting these guys strong, getting them in shape, and the players have a lot of respect for those guys for getting them ready. Tavian Banks has sure looked good early in this season. I, I don't know about the hair, the whole Mohawk braid thing, but he can do whatever he wants if he continues to run the football. Sherman on a play action over the left side, and there's Tavian on cue down inside the 30-yard line. That was a great call by there by, by Don Patterson. Coach Patterson knows tendencies of, of the Iowa offense as well as anybody. He studies our tendencies as well as the other team's tendencies. We'll talk about that a little more first. Matt does a great job of selling, looking the other way. Nice, easy ball to Tavian. What, was, what I was saying before, we'll get to in a second. Nice close up on Matt. Good fundamentals there. Oh. That's good for Matt. He needs that. <laughs> Make him feel like he played a game tomorrow. Jody Sparks with the hit, and that connection is worth 33 yards down to the Tulsa 27-yard line. They're running it again. Cedric what I was pushed out of bounds by Terrence. Sorry, Paul. Mentioning about Coach Patterson, he knows our tendencies, and he knows in that formation that most of the time we do run the ball. He's aware of that, so he sets in, sets up uh, a nice play-action pass by running the ball a bunch and then fooling him with the pass. It's a great job of noticing that by Coach Patterson getting in at the right time of the game. Richard Willick checks in for Timmy Dwight. And we'll have a second and four here. Rich Willock out on the right flank. Berger and Shaw in the backfield. Sherman rolls right. Rolls right. And stumbles at the 26-yard line. That'll be a loss of three. It's a situation right there where Matt really needs to get rid of the ball. He only had one receiver in the route, and it was obvious early in the play the receiver wasn't going to be there. He didn't have a secondary receiver to dump the ball off to, so Matt should just, once he sees there's nowhere to run, just get rid of it. Now you're close with Matt, and obviously as a former Iowa quarterback, 
Uh, he's a real student. I mean, he must ask you a lot about what Hayden's done here in the past and what what uh, what he needs to do to succeed in all facets as an Iowa quarterback, does he not? Matt used to ask me a lot of questions until he figured out that he was smarter than me. <laughs> and now he ignores me now. But Matt, Matt's a uh, great student of the game. Learning about the game is very important to him. He spends a lot of time in the film room. Third and nine. Sherman to Shaw. He'll have to do some work here for the first down, and he will not get it. He'll be two or three yards short. Take a look from the end zone camera on this one. See Matt dropping back, trying to sell the fact he's going to throw deep. Columbus are out there trying to run a route as well. Linebacker number 56 really kind of ruins it for us. Didn't get much of a chance, but getting back to Matt, he's as conscientious a player as, uh, as we've ever had at Iowa. I, you know, I, I think a lot of football fans underestimate the, the sheer amount of just studying game film and, and playbooks that has to be done for a quarterback to be successful. Zach Bromert here with a 39-yard field goal attempt just inside his range, and it is off the crossbar. Zach hits the crossbar for the second time this season. He did it last week against Iowa State on an extra point, but he lucked out, and it went in. This one he misses. Hayden says his range is 40 yards. He missed from 39, and the Hawkeyes continue to lead by just four. From uh, Notre Dame, who, who walked on it uh, with the Fighting Irish, and Bromert came on mid-early season last year. He kicked six extra points, looked perfect, and Hayden Fry didn't even know the kid's name in the post-game press conference. Coach that little number 38. Coach Fry has a lot to worry about during the course of the week. Solomon White. Out across the 20, 25, out of bounds. Pick up of three or four yards there for Solo. Iowa does a good job of stringing this sweep out just the way every team from junior high to high school to college is coached. String out the sweep. They do a good job. You see Billy Innes, defensive end, carry coach to safety. String that play out to the boundary because once you get to the boundary, like our old running back coach, Coach Jackson, used to say, the boundary never misses a tackle. Mm -hmm. Second and six now for Tulsa. Fitzgerald in the shotgun. Four wideouts. Heavy pressure. Mm, out of nowhere is Matt Hughes, the sophomore linebacker. Hawks dropped out of their zone coverage there and went to some man and brought some pressure, and that's exactly what you want to see out of your man package. You bring in the linebackers, and the hope is you bring in too many guys that they can protect, and that's what happens. Matt Hughes comes free. And that's exactly why you play a man defense is to get those linebackers and ends in there and the quarterback. Young kid, lots of talent, Matt Hughes. He and Vernon Rollins are the linebackers for the Hawkeyes. They are both sophomores, and they both have incredibly bright futures. That's the second sack for the Iowa defense tonight. Kirk Myrick, ooh, just barely gets it away. And there is a flag back by the punter. They might call roughing the punter here on Richard Willock. It's really a tough call for the Hawks. He really didn't run into him that violently. Looks like he just caught a little piece of him. I'm sure he had a pretty good acting job by the punter. Take another look at this one. You can see it looks like I mean, Jason House oh. and Richard Willock <laughs> kind of ran into each other and ended up running into the punter. He did a nice little dance step there at the very end. He he hopped up and threw himself flat personal on the turf. Hey, whatever the works, kicker, they're going to call the personal on foul person. on Willock. That'll be a first down for Tulsa. I think all punters are well versed in that maneuver there. Get touched a little bit and go down to get the flag. In a close ball game, Hayden Fry's game face looks the same just about the entire time. So I can't tell you what he feels about that play. He's worried about the next one. I'm sure he's not happy about it. I'm glad I'm not standing down next to him. <laughs> oh, you served your time. I've seen enough of that, yeah. <laughs> Let somebody else do it. Keith Blyer and Paul Burmeister, happy to have you along. We're live from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hawkeyes lead by four. Fans of women's athletics should note that now is the time to order your goal card. It's the season ticket to more than 75 regular season women's athletic events at the University of Iowa, including all the home games of Angie Lee's nationally ranked Iowa women's basketball team and Beth Beglin's field hockey Hawkeyes. For more information, 
call 1-800-IA-HAWKS, 1-800-IA-HAWKS, and ask all about the goal card for women's athletics at the University of Iowa. Here we go. Tulsa trails by four. This is Reggie Williams, gets past John LaFleur. Back to just about the line of scrimmage, not much there. Well, Reggie Williams really gets around. I think about 15 years ago, he was playing, playing at Georgetown. <laughs> a couple years ago, he was a junior college transfer for the Hawks. Well, it's that eligibility loophole about how you can play, you know, you can play different sports. Another look here. Slips by LaFleur's grasp. See Brett Chambers getting double teamed there. Actually does a good job of fighting off those two guys and stringing them out to the sideline. Second and eight. West Coswell in motion. Quick dump to West. Jets out to the 37-yard line. That'll bring up third and five. If the Hawkeyes manage a victory here tonight, Paul, and you were surprised to hear this stat on the plane ride this morning, Iowa has not won a non-conference regular season game out of the state of Iowa since 1988 when they beat Kansas by 35 in Lawrence. Uh, surprising but true. We normally play most of the non-conference games at home. Fitzgerald hits Damon Savage out at the 44-yard line. Oh, Savage, the freshman wide receiver. Great placement right here by Fitzgerald. He had to throw his ball accurately because his receiver wasn't that open. Puts it right where he needs to. Right before Kerry, I think, believe that was Kerry Cooks. Good timing in, good placement by Fitzgerald there. The receiver did a good job of getting the stick. He got half a yard pass the first down, settled down and waited for the ball. Those are the kind of plays that's keeping Tulsa in this ball game. Third and long, and they come through. A new set of downs. Fitzgerald play action over the middle and it's picked off interception Damian Robinson is 10th of his career he's out across the 40 yard line inside the 35 Damian with the pick and the Hawkeyes take over in Golden Hurricane territory big play right there by Damian Robinson if we can see the replay here coming up normally on this sort of you want to throw a ball deep across the middle you need a receiver running deep to pull that safety back with him Tulsa did not have that Damian Robinson had nothing to hold him back there so he can just come up and cover the middle of the field Damon Savage, the intended receiver, 28 yards on the return there by Robinson. Not a very good idea to throw the ball deep across the middle if you don't have that receiver coming across deep to hold those safeties. Just over four minutes here in the second quarter and the Hawkeyes take over on the 34-yard line. Good to see Rodney Filer in the ball game. He's the lead blocker for Tavian Banks, who stumbles out across the 25. But Rodney Filer in the game is the fullback. He uh, seeing his first playing time of the year after a it's terrible injury. Great job injury of last blocking season. here by Iowa's backs in the offensive line. How often do you see a running back go 10 yards before he's even touched? Doesn't happen very often in the Big Ten. It was not good enough for a first down. It'll be second and uh, one here for the Hawkeyes. Tulsa has been playing a lot of man. Gives the Hawkeyes a chance to go get a big play with one of the receivers on second and one. Great time to look for that. Backs in the eye. Rich Willock, the wide receiver set right. Up the tag in, and they won't even get the first down. Tulsa is still committed to playing a lot of man defense. And I think with Iowa's town, that receiver... That that leaves a lot of responsibility for the receiver out there, been, or for the defensive back, I'm sorry, covering the receiver. So we see a guy Abdullah. coming free. Yep. Not hard to make a tackle for a loss and nobody touches you. Senior defensive end makes that play. There's a good look at Abdullah. So you can see the whack patch there on his shoulder. It's also a member of the 16-team whack conference. Third and four for the Hawkeyes. Play action. Sherman has it. Looking for a pass. Heavy pressure from behind by Abdullah. Sherman will not get out to the first down marker. And they'll have a decision to make here. Once Matt, again, Abdullah got through there, Paul. Yes, he did. He almost got Matt. Matt did the right thing there. He only had two receivers in that route, a tight end and a back. Both were covered. Matt did a good job of turning the ball up, not forcing the ball. This would be a 44-yard field goal attempt. I know Matt's frustrated right now, but he did the right thing. 
there was nobody open there, and I know we wanted to throw and get something going through the air, but there was really nothing there. So Brian Hurley will come on to attempt this one. It's out of Little Rudy range, and Hurley has uh, one field goal this year and one attempt, and it was from 54 yards against Iowa State last week. This officially will be a 45-yard field goal and would put the Hawkeyes up by a touchdown. Little draw on that ball. <laughs> Does he have a leg or what? They, you know, they need to extend the goalpost for Hurley's field goals because he just booms them. Two for two this season for Hurley. The Hawkeyes have the lead now, 17-10, with 2.27 left in the second quarter. The Hawkeye cheerleaders are happy. Their team's on top, 17-10. Hayden Fry is, I, don't, I wouldn't call him happy yet. He's only got a touchdown lead, and we're here in the second quarter. Dave Rader, his team is trailing, but they were 17-point underdogs in this game. Spencer Braggs will make the catch in the end zone, and the Hurricane will start on the 20-yard line. It's a great kickoff by Hurley. Something the Hawkeyes haven't had much in the past is that weapon of kicking the ball in the end zone, getting the touchback, and that's good to see. Hurley capped off just a three-play drive for five yards after the Damian Robinson interception, and Hurley with a 45-yard field goal gives the Hawkeyes that 17-10 lead. 2.27 left here in the first half. in the eye and they take the tight end out to the outside Mark Lippy Fitzgerald dumps it off to Lippy who stiff arms his defender and gets out to nearly the 30 yard line Hawks got caught playing man coverage right there and really puts the linebacker in a tough spot he's responsible for the tight end but he also sees the play action he knows he's got to stick the run he's really in a no-win situation Matt Hughes right there catches himself in the bind chasing the run, but then he has to go get his man who he is supposed to be manned up on. Hughes eventually gets him out of bounds. Good numbers for Fitzgerald, especially when you look at his numbers coming into this game. 15 of 22 for 190 yards. One pick, one TD. He's going to throw again. His 20th attempt. He gets it off here. Heavy pressure. He's going to tuck it under. Ooh, and that just might be a late hit. You bet it is. The yellow hankies fly, and the Hawkeye coaches don't like that at all, but I, I think he was out of bounds there, Paul. Yeah, I think it was a good call. Was it Vernon? I think Billy Ennis got knocked down pretty good here, too. Ortlieb in pursuit. Oh, goodness. Tom Knight. Tommy He's Knight. a good two yards out of bounds there. Billy got flattened, and you don't see a guy in his inch size go down very much, do you? And it was by the smallest guy on the field. They're marching it off. Here we go. Dead ball foul. Late hit out of bounds. 15 out to the lead. First and 10. A Hawkeye miscue, and that marches the Hurricane up to the 44-yard line. I don't think you can argue with that one. I, he was safely out of bounds. He was almost on the other end of the, uh, the white stripe there. Reggie Williams, the lone setback. Two wideouts, two tight ends, and Williams, working hard, picks up a couple. Reggie Williams, up the middle for the goal in our game. Vernon Rollins on the tackle. We're inside two minutes here in the first half. Coming up at halftime, a feature on Niall Kinnick and a live conversation with the athletic director at the University of Iowa, Bob Bolsby. It would do a world of good for Tulsa's confidence if they can put at least a field goal on the board here with the clock running now, 135 left in the first half. Second and five. Reggie Williams bounces over the right side. He's got a first down. Tulsa continues to pick up momentum here as we head into halftime. 
And even if they don't score here, I think that they go into halftime with momentum on their side with the way they've come out and surprised this first half. And now they're starting to mix it up a little bit, too, as well. I mean, they scored their 10 points passing the football. No question about that. Now they're, they're running it a lot more on this drive, and, and they're successful with that. Williams checks out. Solomon White comes in. Damon Savage and Wes Coswell will be the wideouts on the Iowa 44. Fitzgerald calls a timeout. He wants to talk it over with Coach Rader and the rest of the staff with 105 left in the half. Break or no? We see Fitzgerald conversing with Dave Rader over there, and what a great uh, advantage it is for John Fitzgerald to have a tutor like like Coach Rader. Not, not very many quarterbacks play for somebody who has that much experience on the offensive side of the ball, coaching and playing like Dave Rader. He was a professional quarterback for the New York Giants, coach at Alabama, coach quarterbacks there, was offensive coordinator in the SEC, and not very many quarterbacks get to play for somebody like that, get to learn under somebody who actually played in college and in the pros. We've got two former quarterbacks coaching here tonight, both Hayden and Dave Rader. And Chuck Long. And Chuck Long is here, sure who's coaching the defensive side of the ball, which when I first heard, I thought that was strange, but then again, he's got the secondary, and uh, who better to let the secondary know how to get into the mind of a quarterback than, than Chuck Long? That's right. Throughout the past 15 years, Chuck Long has probably watched as much film on defensive backs and defensive coverages as much as anybody. So it may sound weird to have a quarterback coaching DBs, but Chuck probably knows as much about DBs as anybody because he's been watching them forever. There's Charlie. Yep. Looks Parker like Wildeman there on the uh, right side of your screen behind Hayden. There you see Parker Wildeman. Great player here a couple years ago, now working with Paul Longo in the strength program. First and ten for Tulsa. The Macarena song is over, thankfully, and we're back to football. <laughs> Fitzgerald is going long, intended for Coswell, and it'll sail over his and Damian Robinson's head. Good idea right there by Raider and Fitzgerald, but not at all well executed. When you're throwing a deep ball like that, you got to lay it up a little higher and put it more towards the middle of the field. He didn't get much loft on it, put it over his wrong shoulder, and he's lucky to throw a ball that poorly and not have it intercepted. Under a minute now here in the first half, and Tulsa will face a second and ten. They just flashed a, a score here on the scoreboard that might be surprising to you. Louisville beat Michigan State in East Lansing today. They're off to a rough start. The Spartans. 30 to 20, I believe, is the score that I saw. And, and uh, Illinois had some trouble but with Akron early, but then eventually pulled away and won that one, 38-7. Flag on this play here on second and 10. The intended receiver was Tony Fisher. We'll wait for the call. Raider not happy. Something went wrong for his team there. I am not going to uh, try to read lips there. <laughs> saw a few words that are not fit for television. You won't see that from the Hawkeye sideline. Oh, no. Here comes the call. The legal shift on the offense. Penalty is refused. It's third down. Illegal movement there on Tulsa, but the Hawkeyes say, "Hey, we're going to make you, we're going to make you convert another third down because it's third and ten. They decline that penalty." It's a big play here for Tulsa. And they've got five wideouts. Fitzgerald in the shotgun, calling audibles. And off go the receivers. Hawkeyes on a blitz, intended for Bennett, and he's got the first down. He got across. Yes, he did. He is inside the 35-yard uh, line there. But Tulsa did a great job there of exposing a mismatch out there on the field. You got defensive backs manned up on receivers all over the field, but they find the one guy was manned up on a linebacker. Matt Hughes is a great player, but covering 12-yard outs I don't think is his specialty. And Tulsa did a good job of finding that matchup and exposing it. Tulsa's going to call a timeout here. They convert another third down and long on this drive. Those are the kind of plays that will keep them in this football game. I was a little surprised to see Iowa playing a man coverage there on third and ten. When you play man, you're exposing yourself to the potential for giving up a big play just like that. Matt Hughes is mismatched. He's not going to cover a lot of people that far downfield. If you stay in a zone, 
you drop six or seven people into coverage and they've only got four or five people out, you would think you could cover them better that way. They really are playing well on offense. You, you, you have to give it to them. Obviously, Fitzgerald made that one mistake and threw it into Damian Robinson's hands. But they look good, and they've got a chance to score here late in the second quarter. Hey, Hawkeye football fans, the official Iowa Hawk Shop is your source for the official sideline gear of the Iowa Hawkeyes. You might even be able to buy that helmet right there on Herky. I, I'm not sure. The same Reebok brand shirts, sweaters, and jackets worn by Coach Hayden Fry and his staff are available at the Hawk Shop to order yours or to receive a 1997 official Iowa Hawk Shop catalog. Contact the Hawk Shop at 1-800-HAWK-SHOP. Aren't there eight letters in Hawk Shop? Somehow it works. <laughs> Normally there are seven letters in it. Phone number, but, or numbers, it should work. On the rollout is Fitzgerald. He cannot find a target, but he will pick up about five yards as he runs out of bounds. We've seen both quarterbacks tonight doing a good job of not forcing the ball. Fitzgerald had two quarterbacks out in that route. It was the same route that he had they scored the first touchdown on. He got the little stop route and the flag route in behind. Iowa did a good job adjusting to it, covering them both. Fitzgerald picked it up and kept it himself. So with the Hawkeyes up 17-10 here late in the second quarter. Tulsa knocking on the door here. At least now they're inside the 30, getting close to field goal range. Heavy blitz here by the Hawkeyes. Fitzgerald, great job of getting away. But Plez Atkins, did he come up with the interception or was he out of bounds? They're going to call him out. I think they're ruling him out of bounds. And that's exactly what you want to happen to the man coverage, just as the Hawks did earlier in the quarter. We won't see that. We'll see Plez Atkins here covering Caswell. Does a nice job of sticking to him. Almost comes up with the interception. Didn't quite get quite. his foot in bounds. Yep. But he did his job. He had him covered. Got to get them both in there. And Hawks did a good job of getting to the quarterback and rushing, which is exactly what they want to do on that man coverage. Can they convert another third down on this drive? Third and five. Oh. Fitzgerald for Coswell, and he's got it inside the Hawkeye 10-yard line. They cannot stop Tulsa on third down, Paul, on this drive at least. Hawks got stuck in man coverage there once again, and Tommy Knight did have bad coverage, but when you're in man, it's tough to it's tough to stick to guy too much. And the quarterback did a nice job of laying the ball out there. Caswell did a good job of just getting a step. That's all you need is a step. He didn't beat Tommy very badly, but just enough to be open. The quarterback laid it right in there for him. I tell you what, the John Fitzgerald to Wes Caswell. Uh, combo is working extremely well tonight. Wes is having himself a game. He only had five receptions coming in. And he's got five already tonight for 71 yards. 31 seconds left in the second quarter. Fitzgerald's going to call a T.O. They score here. We got a tie ball game at halftime, folks. They can punch it in the end zone. Hawkeyes came in this one 2-0. and Ranked 19th in the country. Tulsa 0-2 with losses to SMU and Oklahoma State. They hadn't thrown a touchdown pass in 28 quarters, in case you're joining us late, and they threw a touchdown pass in this one. It's Gerald to Caswell. That gave Tulsa 10-7 lead. Sherman then hit Timmy Dwight to reclaim the lead, and Brian Hurley hit a 45-yard field goal to make it 17-10. I know the fans don't like to see it, but calling a timeout in that situation is a very small play by the quarterback. If you're not comfortable with what's called down there in the goal line, it's no time to make a mistake. He didn't like what he saw, wasn't comfortable with the play, and called a timeout. Very smart, heady play by the quarterback. I'm not a meteorologist, but there is a, a definite hurricane warning tonight. I'm telling you. No pun intended, right? Well, of course not. They're knocking on the door. Hayden concerned. No need for the sunglasses anymore. First and goal. Coswell and Bennett, the wide outs on the right side. Solomon White, the tailback. Fitzgerald, gonna throw. Caswell had a chance, but nice defense on the play by Robinson and Knight. Damian Robinson did a good job of getting in there and doing just enough to cause the incompletion. Would have taken a great grab. Got it off just in time. Jason House lays a hit on him. Mm. Tommy Knight, D-Rob did just enough to break that up. There's Robinson Damian. with one interception already tonight. And coverage in the end zone on that last play. Second and goal. 27 seconds now left in the first half. 
Solomon White, the lone setback. Fitzgerald's going to throw. Pass deflected in the end zone by Kerry Cooks, intended for Tony Fisher. Third goal. Tell you what, in the nick of time, quite frankly, the defensive backs for Iowa are stepping up. He did a good job here not buying the play fake. It was man coverage, so they're not paying attention to the play fake. They're just watching the guy that they're in coverage on and the quarterback, and they do a good job there not biting off with the play fake. Fitzgerald put it in there, but Kerry Cooks did a nice job of reaching over the top and knocking it down. 22 ticks now left here in the first half. It'll be a third and goal for Tulsa. That information tells the story here at Skelly Stadium. Ball playing zone coverage now. Play action again. Fitzgerald improvising. Steps out of bounds. And as a quarterback, that's really what you hate to see down here. You want to see a man coverage because that gives you guys much more of a chance to open up. When the defense plays the zone, there's not a whole lot of room to find the holes. Iowa does a good job of covering all the guys they send out. The guys stay in their zone. And things are getting a little bit testy. Watch the end of this play here. Fitzgerald did not like that move by Ennis Inge, and he went to track him down. So here's a 29-yard field goal attempt by James Anderson, the junior, with 15 seconds left here in the second quarter. This will make it a four-point game if converted. Within four points of the 19th ranked Hawkeyes, 17 to 13. The Flyer Ball Burmeister in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Another look at the field goal. No, it was good all the way. And we've got a close football game. There are not a lot of Iowa fans back at home that expected that, nor sitting here in the stands tonight. This will be a good test for Iowa, though. More times than not during the Big Ten season, they're going to go into halftime with a tight game on their hands, and this will be a good test for them. And there are other teams in the Big Ten struggling in some non-conference games. Yeah, Michigan State lost to Louisville today. You wouldn't expect to see Illinois struggle with a team like Akron. Really a quality drive by Tulsa. 14 plays, 73 yards in 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Big third down plays is what highlighted that drive. They, they converted each time. They ran the ball better than they had yes. earlier in the half too. Mixed it in well with the pass which has already been successful for them the whole game. Man you're looking at, Timmy Dwight. Electrified Iowa City High School with his punt returns and kickoff returns has yet to return one for a touchdown. And they're going to roll it along the ground to Timmy. And he stumbles. Just, just flat fell on the turf. So Iowa will have at least one play from scrimmage with nine seconds left here in the first half. See that uh, barbed wire tattoo there on Tim? You have one of those, don't you? Well, he's going to hook me up. He knows a guy in downtown Iowa City and... Uh, I promised him if they end up in Pasadena, I'll, I'll come out with the whole barbed wire look. But who had the barbed wire tattoo first, uh, Timmy Dwight or, or Pamela Anderson? Because she's got one too. I think Pamela did. Yeah, I do. She's a little better looking than Tim. That's right. <laughs> Cedric Shaw with the pitch over the left side. Out across the 30-yard line, and the clock stops with four seconds left. Knowing Hayden, I think we'd probably just run one up the middle here and head into halftime up four. I've uh, I've seen every game for the better part of three seasons now, home and away, and I don't I've never seen him uh, try much here. He did last week. We should note, however, throw deep against Iowa State. Now, there may have been some. At least it was implicated. Some personal feelings there about trying to score another touchdown on Iowa State. We'll never know the real answer, but I believe they are just going to hand it off here, and they do. Who's that with the ball? That was Mike Berger. Berger, the fullback. And he runs the clock out. We're at halftime here at Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Keith Blyer and Paul Burmeister with you. we got a close game, folks. Expect it or not. 17-13. Hawkeyes on top. We'll 
We'll be back after this message from your local station. Out of the nation in kickoff returns and interceptions. On November 11th, 1939, in Iowa Stadium, the beloved Ironmen would have to prove their mettle by facing the undefeated Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Kinnick ran the ball through the Irish line for a touchdown. Seconds later, he drop-kicked the extra point. Iron Mike Enoch was the driving force for Iowa's defense, but Notre Dame managed to score. When it was all over, Iowa had beaten Notre Dame 7-6. to six. Iowa City erupted with excitement as it did with other football victories. Their team was now ranked ninth in the nation, and the best student athlete in the country lived on campus with them. On or off the playing field, Niall Kinnick was Iowa's favorite son. A Phi Beta Kappa honor student, Kinnick was a scholar as well as a gifted athlete. Freshmen were in awe of his presence as he walked through the campus, but they were most impressed by his unpretentious personality. Nationally, he was a prominent sports figure, voted top player by the United Press and named Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press over Joe DiMaggio of the New York Yankees. Kinnick received one of the top awards any student athlete could be honored with, the Heisman Trophy. I'd like to make a comment which in my mind is indicative perhaps of the greater significance of football and sports emphasis in general in this country. And that is, I thank God I was warring on the gridirons of the Midwest and not on the battlefields of Europe. I can... Eventually, every member of the famous Iron Man team left for military service, including Coach Anderson. Niall Kinnick graduated with honors and enlisted as a pilot with the Navy. But in June of 1943, a sudden tragic loss stunned many around the country as well as those on campus. Niall Kinnick was lost at sea while making a forced landing in his Navy plane. Number 24, Iowa's favorite son, was gone. It's the 19th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes leading the Tulsa Golden Hurricane 17 to 13. We are at the half back up in the press box. I'm Keith Blyer and joining us now a face I'm sure you recognize the athletic director here at the University of Iowa Bob Bowlesby and Bob teams leading but only by four points. I know Iowa was heavy favorites coming in. Uh, what have you seen in the first half. Well I've seen a lot of consistency out of the quarterback position for Tulsa. I think uh, Fitzgerald's done a great job. He's got receivers that are running good routes. We've had trouble keeping up with them in man coverage. I think we're uh, starting to get to the quarterback a little bit, but Tulsa's playing with more emotion than we are right now, and that's to be expected, I guess. Uh, it, they aren't highly regarded, and uh, I think we came in thinking we were going to have perhaps a little easier game than we're having, and so I look for us to uh, continue to uh, approach dominance in the second half, but uh, we certainly can't let Tulsa hang around because they're capable of beating us. They certainly are. Hayden Fry said it earlier this week. He expected a tough, close game. Uh, some of the media scoffed, but uh, he's actually right, and, and Tulsa had and passed the ball well so far this season, but on a bus ride with Shirley Fry today, she said, Keith, watch, it'll be tonight. Their passing game will click, and, and Shirley Fry, the coach's wife, was dead on. But uh, talk about uh, the Bowl Coalition situation, the Rose Bowl now involved. Uh, is this a good thing? I think it's a great thing. I was involved in the Rose Bowl Management Committee over the last couple of years, and I really think that the, uh, the new alliance offers us the best of both situations. We've been able to maintain our special relationship with the Rose Bowl, and we'll be able to have a one or two team participate in the national championship. Obviously, it brings a lot of money to the table, but that really isn't fundamental in our thinking. We, we like to make the money. It's, it's nice to have access, however, to that national championship because there are recruiting implications, and I think the Big Ten and the Pac-10 uh, they're world-class universities, and they aspire to be the very best in everything that we do. Switching to uh, hoops here for just a second, Bob, uh, all the speculation about a Big Ten postseason basketball tournament for the men. Is that going to happen? Well, it's too early to tell right now, but I think uh, for the first time in, in our history, the Big Ten presidents are saying, let's take a good hard look at this. Let's see if uh, there's merit in a basketball tournament. In all honesty, some of it emanates out of our difficulty the last two years in uh, having teams progress through the NCAA tournament. I happen to think that that's probably more cyclical than anything else, but having said that, I think it's a good time for us to look at the tournament, look to see if it makes some sense for us financially, academically, competitively, and I 
I think there are those who speculate that perhaps we're not as tournament tough as some other institutions, and especially collectively in the Big Ten, simply because we haven't had to play in a one-and-done tournament right. before. It, it certainly may benefit them when it comes to the NCAA tournament. Some say it would hurt teams if they are knocked out of the tournament early, but generally teams are locks if they've had great seasons anyway. Uh, track, you've uh, proven that you like to promote from within. Larry Wazorek gets the job. Uh, I'm sure he's very excited about the opportunity. Well, our first priority is always to hire the best coach we can hire, and uh, uh, it's it's nice when it happens to be one of our graduates. Obviously, Larry was a great competitor for us, a six-time Big Ten champion in cross country and track. Uh, he's paid his dues as our cross country coach and also as an assistant track coach but the long and the short of it is when it came time to interview Larry came in and did the best job <laughs> he, he had the best plan for how he was going to move us forward and we want our big our track program in the upper half of the Big Ten and once we get there we want to have a chance to win the championships and so uh, I think Larry's the right guy at the right time all right thanks very much Bob Bowlesby the athletic director joining us so don't grind your teeth too much in the second half we're going to pull this one out okay well you know that I'm a pacer by nature I haven't sat down yet and so uh, I doubt that I will in the second half either, but uh, I'll look for the Hawkeyes to come out and play more consistent and better in the second half. For the record, he hasn't sat down yet. I've, I've seen him. Bob Bowles be with us. More to come. Back. Fitzgerald to Wes Caswell. 13-yard hookup, capping off an 8-play, 57-yard drive, and Tulsa takes a 10-7 lead. But the Hawkeyes would have an answer. Timmy Dwight would score after this Cedric Shaw run. Watch said break free down the sidelines. The only guy that can catch him is Jeremy Bunch. And here comes Bunch, knocks him out of bounds, and that would set up Timmy D. In motion, checks back. Sherman rolls to his left, finds Dwight in the corner of the end zone. The Hawkeyes took a 14-10 lead. Two field goals by each team, or one each, makes it 17-13 at the half. And the second half is coming up next, live from Skelly Stadium. Stay with us. Hurricane 17-13. We await the second half kickoff. Hayden's team up by four points. Conversation here with Cedric Shaw. He's given Ced a hard time about not reaching the end zone on that 50-yard run, perhaps. I'm interested to see how Matt Sherman comes out and reacts to this unexpected adversity here in the first half. You figure Matt's a starting quarterback for the rest of his career. He's got maybe 20 more starts left in him. He's going to have a lot of situations like this. I'd like to see Matt come out nice, poised, relaxed, just lead some nice ball control drives. And I think, you know, Matt's at the point in his maturation process where that's exactly what you're going to see. Dave Rader, I'm not sure if he makes a ton of adjustments at halftime, Paul. His team is uh, hanging right in with a quality Big Ten football squad. They've done a great job of mixing up the run and the pass in the first half. They came out throwing the ball, and then they came back second quarter running the ball on first down. So they've done a really nice job of doing the unexpected, throwing when the Hawks are expecting pass and vice versa. The Hawkeyes will uh, kick off to start the second half. Tulsa, after their first win of the season, Hawkeyes looking to go 3-0. We haven't talked uh, at all, Paul, about the fact that uh, Tulsa is now a member of the WAC. And uh, the WAC conference, forgive the pun, is quite wacky, isn't it? I mean, with all the teams they've got this year and, and how large that conference is. Yes, and when you hear about the WAC conference, you think a high-scoring offense. It's San Diego State versus BYU, Ty Detmer, Todd Santos. Really, some of the best college offenses in the past decade have been from the WAC. Now, Tulsa's going to fit right into the WAC. They're going to have to continue what they've done tonight. Up till tonight, they haven't looked like a typical WAC team, though. Charlie Higgins and Spencer Braggs back to receive. Higgins trying to get this crowd into the game. The WAC conference, by the way, 16 teams, two divisions. They split it up into quadrants, five time zones, covers nine states and over 4,000 miles. Boom. Second half underway. That's Braggs from the goal line out to the 20. He's got some more room out to the 30. A quality return to nearly the 40-yard line. And he is pumped up. So are his teammates. It's not the way the Hawks want to start the first half. It also doesn't have to go very far to get into, into uh, field goal range. Nice job of blocking by the kickoff team there. Kickoff return team, I should say. And a poor job by the Iowa kickoff team. Although it is good hustle there, good stick to itiveness by Rich Willock there coming off a block. Willock finally makes the tackle. It is a 37 yard return. First and 10 for Tulsa. 
Tony Fisher out of the backfield now lined up as a tight end. And that is Reggie Williams out to the 40-yard line across the Reggie trying to rack up another 100-yard game. He's got five of them this season. And he had 130 against the Cowboys last week. He's not there yet tonight. All right, we're starting off the second half the way they started off the first playing a zone defense. Same setup for Tulsa as well on this play. Again, it's a give to Reggie Williams, and he stood up nicely by Matt Hughes. It's going to bring up a third down situation. That was in the first half when the Hawks had the tendency to play man defense. Third and short, third and medium. They tried to man up, get a big play, get in on the quarterback, and see if they play some man defense here on this situation. Be third and uh, three. Once again, Savage and Caswell, the wideouts. Hawks are playing man coverage here. West in motion. Hawks bring a lot of guys. Matt Hughes in hot pursuit. Fitzgerald gets rid of it, intended for Caswell incomplete. Tommy Knight on the play. Tommy did a good job of coverage there. Would have taken a perfect throw and perfect catch. And Fitzgerald put a nice throw on there. But it wasn't enough. Fitzgerald wasn't a good enough throw by Fitzgerald as Caswell had to sell out. It would have been a great catch. Iowa fans getting a bit vocal, applauding their effort there on defense. Davian Banks, Tim Dwight back to receive. The punt from that man, Kirk Myrick. Nice boot, nice spiral. Timmy Dwight at the 13. Out to the 25-yard line, and we have a flag thrown on the far side. Have to wait for that call. They spot the ball right on the 25. 43-yard punt from Myrick. Dwight brings it back 12 yards. There's the call. During the return, lock in the back by the receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first and 10. One of the Hawkeyes blocked from behind. That's a no-no, and so they'll move it back all the way to the 10-yard line. That's where Iowa will start. Up 17-13, third quarter. Backs in the eye behind Sherman, who's completed four of seven tonight. Cedric Shaw out across the 15. With that carry, Shaw is over 100 yards. Here's another look at it. Watch a tremendous leg drive here by Cedric Shaw. He gets hit once, he keeps his legs moving, gets him a couple extra yards. There you see Larry Holton, Iowa's running back coach, talking to Cedric. Second and four. Tavian. Taken down after a gain of maybe two yards. Hawkeyes will face a third down deep in their own territory here. Third and two for the Hawkeyes. Run the ball here, Paul, or you maybe try to throw it. You got, you got two long yards. I throw the ball. You're a quarterback. Of course you throw the ball. Look for the tight end. He hasn't done much tonight. He's going to throw. Good call, Paul. He wanted to go long. Now it's a broken play, and he's not going to make it. That's a loss. And the Hawkeyes are going to have to punt. Iowa now one for six on third down conversions. Hawks, I guarantee you Tulsa's numbers are better. Iowa ran into a problem there that they ran into in the first half as well. They sent three guys deep, and Tulsa had five guys covering them. I don't know if the back didn't get out underneath the linebackers like he was supposed to, but there was nobody there for Matt to dump the ball off. Sherman not happy with his teammates on that play. Something went wrong. Nice punt by Nick Gallery. 
Best punter in the Big Ten, and there's a fumble back there. Spencer Braggs loses it. The ball is loose. Hawkeyes had a chance, and we'll see who came up with it. I think Tulsa somehow miraculously avoided a turnover. Oh, goodness. Terrence Joseph ends up with the football for the Hurricane. Ooh. I didn't see who that was down there for Iowa, who certainly got his hands on the football. But in any case, a 56-yard punt, and Tulsa will have the football when we return. <laughs> Vernon Rollins right up in there showing blitz. Now he backs off. Fitzgerald throwing yet again. Damon Savage has it, and he's got some room to work with, and he's got a blocker, and Savage is out to the 30. He's nearly to the 20-yard line. A huge game for the Hurricane. The freshman wide receiver this in one play takes a deep. This is a great scheme here by Tulsa. Great call by Dave Brader and great execution by Fitzgerald. They, they sent the receiver in motion. You can't see it here, but to spread the defense out. They 51 had yards on the hookup. The free safety had the tough, tough job of being responsible for guys. One guy was all the way over by the sideline. He had another guy coming up the hash. That's a lot of room for him to cover. Iowa didn't do a good job of adjusting to it. Tony Fisher, the big tight end, got himself down there and threw some blocks late for the extra yardage. Fitzgerald rolling left. He's got a man. That's Savage inside the 10. Another first down. It'll be first and goal for Tulsa. Nice touch pass right there by Fitzgerald. He had the, the cornerback in behind the receiver, and he had the safety to drop the ball over. Put it in a perfect spot. On the left, that was a great athletic play right there. Perfect throw. I hate to be Fitzgerald's Chamber of Commerce tonight, but I've really been impressed by the way he's been playing. Boy, he, he has just looked good. He, you know, every time we uh, we snap the football here, he's throwing it. I, they just don't seem to... They had that one drive there late in the second quarter where they ran it, but, it, I mean, it's been nothing but pass tonight for Tulsa. Let's so see if they do it again. He's finding all the holes in that zone defense. First and goal. It's a quick handoff to the fullback, who doesn't have much. And, He's in there Charlie somewhere, Higgins. scuffling there, no, for the ball. That was uh, Charlie Higgins. Chambers combining with... When you get down into this area, you can throw the ball all the way down. But once you get inside the 10-yard line, you got to be able to out-physical people. you got to be able to run the ball. Because the holes they've been finding in Iowa's zone defense aren't going to open up this close to the goal line. They need to be able to run it. Brett Chambers right there makes the tackle. Second and goal on the eight. The give is to Williams, and he's in for the touchdown. Tulsa has taken the lead on the Iowa Hawkeyes here in the third quarter. Eight-yard touchdown run, Reggie Williams, the sophomore. Tulsa's offensive line really did a great job on that play. We talked about Iowa's backs running five, ten yards without being touched. Williams is a great back, but he didn't have to break any tackles here. He just follows his line. Great hole, makes one move. Wasn't really hit until he got to the one-yard line. And Tulsa can go up by three with the extra point. James Anderson. Good. Tulsa leads the 19th ranked Hawkeyes. 20 to 17. We'll be back after this break from your low score and watch Tony Fisher, 95, in blue, working on Matt Hughes. Maybe some extracurricular activity there, but you're going to have to decide. They call it a touchdown, folks. He is in, and the Hawkeyes are trailing 20-17, to 17, and the Tulsa faithful is having a good time tonight so far. Tim Dwight will let Jamie Anderson's kickoff bounce through the end zone, and the Hawkeyes will start on their own 20. Paul, the Iowa defense looks so good in the first two games against Arizona and Iowa State, and Tulsa it does not have a celebrated offense by any means this year, but they uh, are really showing some of the weaknesses in the Iowa defense here tonight. Yeah, up till the night, Iowa hadn't faced a team that threw the ball very well in Arizona and Iowa State, and Tulsa wasn't supposed to be able to throw the ball very well, but the quarterback is performing very well, the receivers are getting open, and this is the first real passing tack Iowa's seen all year. So now it's the Hawkeyes' turn. Sherman. Abdullah in pursuit, and look out, Matty. Salifa Abdullah. And Sherman is a bit woozy, understandably. 
as a former quarterback for Iowa, Paul, can you feel his pain? Yeah, this is tough to see, you know, and what it feels like and uh, being close to Matt. This is no fun to watch, but it's all part of being a quarterback. That's, uh, that's a tough hit as you'll take, and hopefully Matt is just startled. He is down, and the trainers are attending to Hayden Fry's quarterback. I think Matt's all right. He just got shaken up a little bit. There we go. Uh, this will be uh, Ryan Driscoll's cue if Matt Sherman comes out. Driscoll saw some quality time against Iowa State last week, and that will certainly be of benefit here for the Hawkeyes. Good look at Ryan, the senior out of Linmar High School in Cedar Rapids, Marion area. I think we'll only see Matt out for a couple of plays, but if he's not, Iowa's in a great spot to have somebody like Ryan Driscoll backing up. Ryan started eight games himself. Great poise, a great leader. The guys really believe in Ryan. If he has to play the rest of the game, I don't think you're going to see a drop off in the play. His teammates definitely feel that. 7 of 14 for Iowa State. In the Iowa State game, that is 86 yards, and he did throw one interception late going deep. Cedric Shaw takes the handoff from Driscoll and is taken down by Levi Gillen at the 16, maybe the 15. They're going to mark a 16-yard line. Pick up three. So Driscoll takes over the reins here. I know that Matt Sherman, by his body language, was telling Hayden, I can go back in. If you want to pull me out now, I will be ready for you. And he's staying awfully, coached to, awfully close to Coach Fry. Yeah, I think we'll see Ryan back in. I look for the Hawks to play it safe here on third and 15, this deep road territory. I don't think they want to risk some bad happening. Backs in the eye. Ryan's going to try to throw it. His first pass of the day. Will he get it off? No. He is sacked from behind. And Tulsa really has claimed the momentum in this football game. I, I believe Abdullah was the guy again. When you have to throw the ball in third and 15, you don't have the luxury of dumping the ball off to a guy who might be open underneath. You've got to take the chance downfield. Just picking up six and seven yards isn't going to do it for you. And that takes away from what the Iowa offense is all about, which is taking what they give you. You don't have the luxury of doing that on third and long. Nick Gallery standing on his own goal line. Gets the punt off. It will bounce shy of the 50-yard line, but gets a nice Hawkeye roll. And now it's bouncing back. Jump on it, boys. Richard Carter finally downs the football, and Tulsa takes over. They'll have possession, and they have the lead. 41-yard punt from Gallery. Listen to this Tulsa crowd. weren't into the football game when it started. If they were pessimistic when it started, the Hurricane fans are now into it and optimistic. This is the best thing that can happen to an underdog team at home. Get a little bit of upset over a team that's supposed to beat you by a lot, the crowd gets into it, then you really start believing that you can win a game that you really probably shouldn't. The most impressive performer, and we do have uh, slight delay here before the Hurricanes start their series has been the quarterback for Tulsa tonight, Fitzgerald. And this is a guy who came in completing about 20% of his passes and he's certainly done the job tonight. He steps up in the pocket wisely. He's going to pick up uh, at least six yards into Hawkeye territory. That was the first time Jared DeVries had made an appearance in the Tulsa backfield right there, but Fitzgerald did a good job of feeling him and stepping up and avoiding his rush. Fitzgerald's really done a great job of stepping up to the challenge. He had to know tonight that maybe his starting job for the rest of this year was on the line. He's done a great job of stepping up to that challenge. Solomon White bounces off a tackle, and look at this extra effort. It is hard to break away from Billy Anderson, but he was doing it, and he is down to the 40-yard line. This is the guy that's been playing since I was a senior when we played against Tulsa. He scored a touchdown against us, I remember. He's been making big plays for him since. Here you see, this is all heart right here. Stood right up there. by Chambers. He keeps going, and our guys quit. <laughs> Jared DeVries standing on that play, watching White go by. And here's White again. This time, the Hawkeyes are up to the task defensively as they swarm. White, with his performance tonight, has become the seventh all-time leading rusher in Tulsa history. He only needed six yards. I guarantee you he's now seventh all-time. He's well past that. Came in averaging just 21 yards a game. Quite frankly, they feature Reggie Williams, the sophomore, but a couple 
couple nice efforts by Solo tonight. And look at the total yards here in the second half. 100 for Tulsa, two for the Hawkeyes. Second and seven. Pump fake by Fitzgerald over the middle, and oh goodness, there's a fumble on the play. The receiver was Lyndon Nixon. And the Hawkeyes have it. Lyndon Nixon made a fantastic job did a fantastic job of bringing that one in, but then just couldn't hang on. Iowa does a good job here of turning a negative into a positive. Fitzgerald once again makes a good read. Actually kind of forces the ball, but throws it right where it needs to be. Iowa does a good job of stripping the ball. See who gets the strip here. Tommy. Tommy Knight gets his hand in there. Brett Chambers, former walk-on, earned a scholarship, earned a starting spot. Comes up with a big play for Iowa. Tell you what, the Hawkeyes needed that. Yes, they did. And Matt Sherman has returned for Iowa. And he'll throw right away. Over the middle, intended receiver Timmy Dwight broken up. Nice play by Jeremy Bunch. Tulsa has changed up here a little bit in the second half. They were pretty committed to playing a man defense in the first half. They've been playing mostly zone here so far in the second half. Abdullah almost got a hand on Sherman again. Matt really looked content like he was just looking looking to go downfield there. I don't know if he really checked out his underneath receivers or not. Maybe get a look at Matt, not happy with it. But he's still got two downs here left. Second and ten, backs in the eye. White and Gibson to wide outs, they go to Shaw. Over the right side. And that's just a great open field tackle by Jeremy Bunch. That is a super effort. There are not a whole lot of defensive backs in the country who can tackle Cedric Shaw one-on-one -on -one in the open like that. And he shows why he's the Tulsa's leading tackler this year. Other than the fact that he gets a lot of opportunities, <laughs> he can come up and make a few like that. Those are the tackles that, that really count for the stat book, the one where he comes up and takes them down at the line of scrimmage. In fact, it's a loss of a yard, and it'll be third and 11 for the Hawkeyes. They need a first down here. Six minutes, 18 seconds left in the third quarter. Shaw with 105 yards on the night. Hawkeyes need 11 yards here. Play action, Sherman rolls left. Incomplete intended receiver. Demo Odoms, Terrence Joseph breaks it up. Hawks choose to go with a play action there on third down, but they're not going to fool a whole lot of people with the run on third and ten. But once again, there's not really a whole lot you can do on third and ten. There aren't a whole lot of right calls in that situation. The Hawkeyes continue to struggle on third downs. Their third down conversion rate tonight is one of eight now. I think one of the reasons that is they haven't had a whole lot of third and three, third and four. They're facing third and nine, third and ten. Very true. Galleries punt, end over end. Bounces inside the 40, and Damon Gibson will down it at the 34. Time for a break as Tulsa leads Iowa 20 to 17. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. Five minutes, 55 seconds left. Tulsa leading the Iowa Hawkeyes 20 to 17. They have the football, and Reggie Williams has got a hole. He's out to midfield, and a first down for the Hurricane. Did he fumble the ball? I don't think he did. Okay. There was a buzz here in the stadium. I think safety was the first one to touch him there, and that's a bad sign for Iowa's rush defense. Tulsa, since that drive late in the second quarter, has also done well running the ball. And now they, they look like a well-rounded offense. Look at this. Here's Reggie Williams. Another first down. I, I see the Iowa defense losing a lot of confidence just at this point in the game. It's by no means too late to, to win it, but huge holes. Tulsa's offensive line is really handling Iowa's up front. You can see the hole here. Fullback does a great job of popping out on Mark Mitchell. That's a big hole. Corey Brown not doing a good job either. Thankfully, Damian Robinson's doing a nice job there. There's John LaFleur in making a big play. Yeah, LaFleur Le Le takes Williams down in the backfield. And after two consecutive first down runs by Williams, he loses yards. Be second and 14. Hawkeyes still looking for their first 
first down in the second half. Tulsa has six of them. Fitzgerald will go back to the air, but no, I don't think so. Jared DeVries makes his first big play of the ball game. Jared's too good a player to be held out of the backfield that long. He knew sooner or later he was going to come up with a big play. Hopefully that won't be his only one of the night. We see Jared in the middle of the screen. Finally getting by the offensive lineman there. Blast right by Brad Smith, and Fitzgerald could do nothing about it. So it's third and 22. Three sacks on the night for the Hawkeyes. Fitzgerald in the shotgun, five wide outs to choose from. Over the right side, West is wide open again inside the 20. First down for Tulsa. Their third down conversion rate has got to be quite impressive because they just keep doing it. And they had 22 yards on that one. It gained 31. Well, it's tough to see on third and long like that, someone getting that open in the secondary. Nice pump fake there. Casel does a good job of knowing where the first down is. He could have gone out of bounds right there, but he knew he was a couple yards short. Stayed in bounds and turned it up for the first. Caswell's career night continues. Max in the eye. Give us to Williams. Stood up at the line of scrimmage, shakes a tackle, and gets inside the 15. Just over four minutes left in the third quarter. Reggie lost a shoe on that one. I don't know if Reggie's gone down on the first hit all night. You see, make contact oh. behind the line of scrimmage. You actually get about three <laughs> or four more after that. Well, the, his tackler had a nice grip on his shoe, but Reggie just ditched the shoe, continued the run. And Fitzgerald's going to call a timeout here, second and seven for Tulsa. With under four to go in the third quarter, and the Hurricane leading 20 to 17. The university was hoping for about 30,000 here tonight. They didn't quite get that. The attendance is 27,788. Not a bad crowd for an 0-2 football team. This is the first time that a Big Ten team has played here at Skelly Stadium. Hawk fans are encouraged to join the team by joining the iClub, the official booster club of the Iowa Hawkeyes. iClub members receive a variety of benefits for their financial contribution to the intercollegiate athletics program at the University of Iowa. For more information, contact Mark Jennings, Andy Pirro, or Jana Eglund at area code 319. There's the number, 335-3305. The iClub's a lot of fun, folks. 335-3305. 3305 and Paul Burmeister has been working behind the scenes at the on club lately. Yes, I've been fortunate enough to spend time with Mark Jennings and Andy Pirro and they're geniuses. A, oh definitely. Yeah. They do a great job at the university and they work around the clock to make this program go. They told me I had to say that. Of course. We we rehearsed that before the broadcast. Second and seven. Reggie Williams inside the 10, shy of the first down, but a decent gain. If you weren't worried as a Hawkeye fan when Tulsa took the lead 10 to 7 late in the first quarter, you might start to have the stomach turn a little bit now with Tulsa inside the 10, leading by three. Williams, down nearly to the goal line, and it'll be a first and goal for the Golden Hurricane. I spoke, er I spoke earlier about how Tulsa was gonna have to be able to run the ball down here instead of throwing, that's exactly what they've done. Matt Hughes gets caught up on the block there. And the offensive line continues to do a great job. Once you get down in here, there's not a whole lot of room to pass the ball. You need to be able to pound it at the defense, and that's what they've been able to do here in the second half. Troy DeGar in now to quarterback the Hurricanes. He pitches it to Solomon White. Touchdown, Tulsa. Tulsa up 26 to 17 on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Coming into the game, Solomon White had scored this team's only touchdown in their first two losses of the season. He scores to give Tulsa a nine-point lead, 10 with the extra point. 
James Anderson with the boot. And Tulsa leads Iowa 27 to 17. Two minutes, 49 seconds left in the third quarter. Yes, there is a legitimate hurricane warning here tonight in Oklahoma. Even the place kicker and the punter are fired up. That's what happens when you get an upset, Drew, and everybody gets into it and starts believing that they are a good football team, whether they actually are or not. Troy DeGar came in. That's interesting. For some reason, they bring in Troy DeGar. He almost fumbles a snap, but he makes a good pitch, which is all he had to do on the play. And the rest is up to the back. He makes a good hard run, breaks a tackle or two, and in the end zone he goes. Ran over Matt Hughes here. Take another look. Solomon White, good block there on Tommy Knight. That's Matt Hughes, who can't hang on to him. Neither can Vernon, or at least it's too late. Solo's in the end zone, the senior from just outside of Houston, Texas. Nine plays, 65 yards. Tulsa is having their way with the Iowa offense as of late. The Hawkeyes certainly have plenty of time to win this football game, but you know, Paul, you looked at me a little bit ago and you said it's just like 93. Tulsa is not expected to be a good test for the Hawkeyes, but they're proving it yet again. For whatever reason, the Hurricane get up for the Hawkeyes. They sure do, and this will be a great test for Matt Sherman. He's going to face a lot more situations like this in his career as a Hawkeye. And a, and a lot of Big Ten games coming up, so this will be... A good gut check here for Matt. I have all the confidence in the world here in Matt Sherman. He's going to show a lot of poise, show the fact he's already started 16 games. He can handle a situation like this. Fabian Bakes downs it in the end zone. Hawkeyes will start on the 20-yard line. Every successful quarterback in Hayden's uh, tenure at Iowa has had a game that was kind of their signature game where they brought the team back. Chuck Hartley had the, had the game at Ohio State in 87. Chuck Long had numerous games. Jimmy Hartley against Wisconsin in 92. Matt Rogers against Illinois in 91 and Michigan in 90. Every quarterback here has done this, and this is Matt's turn right now. And you get that Iowa quarterback history down. A student of Iowa football history. Let's see what Sherman can do tonight. Matt to Cedric Shaw complete. Does he have the first down? Oh, goodness. Cedric jumped right over the bench. You know, he did that at Michigan State last season when guys were hotly pursuing him out of bounds, and he, he does it again here. This is a good way for Matt to get some confidence here going into the end of the third quarter and for the rest of the game. A nice rollout pass. Also a nice call by Don Patterson. He knows it by jumping Cedric Shaw out of the backfield. He's going to be manned up by a linebacker, and he knows Whoop. Cedric can be oh. the linebacker. The biggest hit on that play by the 40-yard uh, the marker there on the side of the stadium wall. Boom. Good to see Iowa come out throwing the ball first down instead of waiting until third down also. First and 10 now on the 30. And Michael Berger with a huge game. Boy, did he fool the Tulsa team there. Looks That's like hard to pick up. Yeah, the Iowa offensive line has been woken up a little bit. Opens up a huge hole for Mike Berger to run through here. 28 yards on the gain. Another look. Caught him off guard. We've been running with Tavian and Cedric. All of a sudden, we bring the fullback up the middle. They're not expecting it. I don't know if Mike was expecting that big a hole either. He's not used to running that far downfield. Terrence Joseph makes the tackle. There's Berger. Came of age late last season. Had a tremendous game in the Sun Bowl when the Hawkeyes beat the Washington Huskies. Berger is starting over two seniors at fullback. Grandquist, and this is Cedric Shaw inside the 30-yard line. It's another first down, and now the Hawkeyes are moving it with purpose and urgency. Good job of ball handling here by Matt Sherman. Everybody knows Matt throws the ball well, but he fakes the sweep here well, sells the sweep, hands it off to uh, Cedric here and lets him do his thing. There's a lot more to being a quarterback than just throwing the ball. Matt's always done a great job of carrying out his fakes and being good with ball handling. Over two minutes now, exactly two minutes here left in the third quarter. Hawkeyes on the 29. Said inside the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Every play is developing into a first down for the Hawkeyes. Cedric is hobbling. Cedric is going to take himself out. Looks like Tulsa might be getting a little bit tired here, just like in the Arizona game. Iowa's offensive and defensive lines were in better shape. 
It's a great credit to Parker Wilderman and Paul Longo and the Iowa Strength and Conditioning Program when you see this happening late in the game. They had a nice grab on his left ankle. It could be that Cedric's left ankle has been re-injured. We'll keep an eye on that. He left the Iowa State game last week. Sherman gives it to Banks. He picks up a couple yards. Hawkeyes are inside the 15. Cedric pacing the sidelines, testing out what most probably is that left ankle problem. See him there on the right side of your screen. It's been a workhorse on this drive. Dave Rader knows he is not out of the woods yet. Not against the Hawkeyes. He's seen this situation with us before and come out on the losing end both times. Second and seven. Takes the pitch, Mike Berger. Not much there except for a pile of Tulsa defensive players. Inside a minute now in the third quarter, the Hawkeyes trailing Tulsa 27-17. Keith Blyer and Paul Burmeister with you from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Happy to have you watching tonight's game throughout the state of Iowa. This situation, Tulsa is favored playing man coverage, third and short here inside the red zone. But Fry will try to get one of the running backs and tight ends matched up on the linebacker. We got third and six. Tavian Banks the completion, but they will not have the first down. They will fall four yards short of that. It's the exact same play we ran early in the drive to Cedric Sarr on the other side. This time Tulsa does a better job of covering it. That will end the third quarter. The Hawkeyes will be sitting on the nine-yard line as Sherman hits Tavian Banks. Now they've got a decision to make. Kick the field goal or try for the first down. We'll be back. So no need to try for the fourth down first down here or go for the first down. Hayden Fry has elected to put Zach Bromert out there and try a 26-yard field goal. Zach missed his last attempt from 39. Off the post, this one good. is good. And Iowa has pulled to within seven. 27-20 now, Tulsa leading. We were just discussing in the break, Paul, I, I don't know if this is the fact that it's a Big Ten team playing an undefeated team, but uh, it seems almost like the Hawkeyes are tied with them. Tulsa has to do a lot still to pull out this football game. We'll be back. Three seconds into the fourth quarter in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Hawkeye fans, uh, yeah, they look a little bit pensive. Except for the girl in front, she's just having a great time on a Saturday night. Hawkeyes trailing Tulsa now, 27-20. Kick along the ground and off the hands of Adonis Peel and out of bounds. Let's check out how the team stats look up to this point, presented by your friends at Norwest Bank to the nth degree. Tulsa, 10 more first downs than the Hawkeyes. The number that jumps out at me there is 344 passing yards to Iowa's 98. You would have thought those numbers might have been reversed coming yeah. into the game. You know, and people remember because of the other games against the Hawkeyes three and six years ago, or seven years ago, that Tulsa passes the ball well. They had not passed the ball well in their first two games this season. They had tried to run the ball, and they weren't that successful at that as well. So that 344 is just uh, jumps right off the page. You're right, Paul. Lead referee Wally Wrighton is adjusting the clock, and they now have it at 14:52. Uh, but seven plays, 71 yards for Iowa, uh, not Tulsa. Iowa scored there, uh, Hurley's 26-yard field goal. And Fitzgerald back in after one play by Troy Degar, and he was looking for his tight end Tony Fisher, but that's incomplete. I don't think it would have mattered anyway. That's the area. You see a flag come in, you usually expect it on the offensive line. They will bring it back on the hurricane.
Waiting for an indication here from the officiating crew. Yep. Here it comes. Holding on the offense, half the distance penalty, still first down. Coming up here on the replay, you're going to see on your left side, number 68 with the hold on John LaFleur. Yep. Tried to tackle him. <laughs> oh, goodness. He held him a few times. That's Jason Mills, the sophomore, with a mistake on the offensive line, and Vernon Rollins just stands up red sheet the line of scrimmage. There's the Vernon Rollins we saw a lot of in the first two games against Arizona and Iowa State, coming right off the stick in the running back. It's got to make Brett Bielman very happy to see that. That'll be second and uh, 23 here for Tulsa. It'll be a long 22. Clock running here in the fourth quarter. Fitzgerald in the shotgun. Two wide out set left. Low snap. Fitzgerald's got room. And he gets by two Hawkeye would be tacklers out to the 25 yard line. Another big play by the quarterback and the star of this game thus far, John Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald has shown that he can not only throw the ball very well, but he's also a very good athlete. You expect a lot of quarterbacks when they face linebackers like this to go down, maybe even dive, but Fitzgerald here gets by Iowa's Mark Mitchell and by Tommy Knight. Shows a lot of athleticism there. Fitzgerald, from what we understand, is down on this. Yeah, there he is on the sidelines. This would be a huge blow for Tulsa with the way John Fitzgerald is playing. He's not even on the field. He's being attended to off the field. It's obviously the very end of the play. Jared DeVries wrapping him up, and he's got a nice hole to Fitzgerald's left leg there. So, so Troy DeGar comes in. He has seen plenty of playing time in the first two games for Tulsa. He'll roll out quickly to the left. Gets a nice block. His pass is deflected by Damian Robinson. And, ooh, we got some trash talking going on. Well, that's almost embarrassing to see a quarterback get an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, if that's what it is. Degar gave him a, 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 a sure push there at the end of this play. It was Damian Robinson that jumped up and deflected the pass here. No flag on the play. Fourth down. They picked it up. Looked like it was going to be a penalty on the quarterback for shoving the defensive back, and that's not the type of behavior you want out of your leader out yeah. there. The quarterback gave Damien a shove. Troy DeGar did for sure, and uh, and Damien certainly walked right up to him and, and said something to him. So they just picked up the flags. Never under Tulsa will punt. That is Kirk Myrick. Standing on the 11-yard line. Dwight and Damon Gibson now back to return the punt. They could use something from one of these two guys right now. Gibson takes it on the 29. Up the middle. Scoots to the outside. Breaks a couple tackles and really does a nice job on that return out to the 45. He didn't have a whole lot of help and blockers there. He just created all that on his own. So the Hawkeyes will take over, trailing by a touchdown, 27 to 20. 13 minutes, 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 16-yard return by that was Demo Odom. Scoreboard back in Iowa. Hawkeyes trailing by a touchdown. Aiden Fry paying complete attention to this series. Cedric Shaw spins away from one tackle, but look at this Tulsa defense. Where was the Iowa offensive line on that play? I didn't even see him. It's a situation right there where Tulsa brought their linebackers and really had Iowa's offensive line outnumbered. Tulsa's been playing a lot of zone. I think Iowa expected him to play his own, but they found the linebackers in the backfield. Loss of four. Second and 14 now for Iowa. The man who really made that play was uh, Wadavita Kazadi. He tore his bicep last week, and he's playing today. He's a tough defensive player for Tulsa. Fake pitch to Tavian, or fake pitch to uh, Shaw, and they give it to Berger, who gets back about nine yards. 
That was a big play right there because it kept Iowa from facing another third and long situation. Now they've got third and four. Iowa has all sorts of stuff they can use on third and four as opposed to third and 14. So the ball now in Tulsa territory on the 49-yard line. Aiden looking to keep his record perfect against Tulsa. He's 2-0, but he's never played Tulsa on the road. Tulsa playing man coverage here. Sherman will attempt to pass. He's got Cedric Shaw, who drops the football. Good call by Coach Patterson and Coach Fry. Nice throw by Matt Sherman, but Cedric can't come up with it. Not a whole lot more they can do there. Just got a thrown catch. Cedric is an incredible competitor, and you know he is upset with himself there. He is just shaking his head back and forth and just not happy. Cedric knows he, that he should have caught that ball. Trying to now Coach six Fry. of 11. So he's trying to talk Coach Fry into going for it there. I think it's a little too early to be doing that, though. Iowa has called a timeout. We're going to take a break. The Hawkeyes will face a fourth and four when we come back. A right-handed quarterback, but he needs that left arm to pull through with his body and get his motion started. And if his left arm isn't healthy, it's going to affect his motion a lot more than people think. So the Golden Hurricane are forced to punt. If ever Tim Dwight would pick a nice spot to return a punt for a touchdown. Hey, Timmy, now would be a good time. Iowa, trailing Tulsa, 27 to 20. There on the upper left side, the mascot visiting the fans, and uh, Fitzgerald, I think, is uh, done for the evening as Kirk Myrick punts it away. Low spiral, Timmy Dwight at the 30. Dwight at the 40. Dwight at midfield, spins away from one tackle, takes it back to the Tulsa 45. And there is a bad picture for Tulsa fans. You don't root for injuries, but uh, that, that may be a good sign for Iowa if he doesn't return. He had a fantastic game, Paul. Looks like they might just be take, taping, uh, taking some tape off. That might have been uncomfortable for him. He might still be coming back in the you game. You think he might return? I well, don't believe he's we'll not going to play until I actually see it. Because when you're playing that well, you don't yeah, I know. It's take an awful lot to get yeah, you out of the it game. Sure, it sure will. Unless a trainer has said, listen, you can't go. First and 10 on the 47. They mark it back a bit. Sherman has plenty of time over the middle. Is Tim Dwight going to come up with this one? No. Nice defense on the play there by Terrence Joseph, the junior safety. Tim Dwight did a good job of turning it into a defensive back there and present, preventing the interception. He really wasn't that open. It would have taken a perfect ball by Matt. Tim did a good job of breaking up the interception. See Timmy trying to get deep on the strong safety there. He was not fooled, does a good job of getting up. Timmy does, I'm saying, does a good job of knocking the ball down. You know, do you, sometimes I think that, that uh, they underestimate Timmy's speed because there have been two passes tonight that Sherman has really thrown under when Tim can just get, I mean, you can send that thing to the end zone and he might have a shot at it. Oh, mix up in the backfield, and uh, Cedric Shaw is thrown for a loss. The sack on the play by Ryan Farley, but really, Sherman and Shaw ran into each other, and that's when the play went wrong. That's really unexplainable for veterans like Matt and Cedric to happen, have something happen like that this late in the game. You got Iowa's all-time leading rusher, and uh, the Hawkeyes' fifth leading career passer there at quarterback running into each other here in the fourth quarter. Iowa really has got to get back on track, and Aiden Fry knows it. This is a third and 15 on their own 48-yard line. Too familiar with this. He's jumping Cedric out of the backfield, looking for him to get a matchup on this defensive back here. Demo Odoms has it. He's got the first down and more inside the 30. A huge play for the Hawkeyes, and Odoms pumped up. That's a play right there that, you, that has been the bread and butter of Iowa's offense for a long time. At least I know when I was playing, this is a play we use all the time. They jump Cedric out of the backfield, make them think they're going to Cedric. He runs his player out of there and opens up a hole in there for Demo. We can see it on the wide angle. You see how nice that opens up. Demosinides Odoms the third. With what you could call the biggest reception of the night for the Hawkeyes. There is a, an injured Iowa player on the field, and I, I think that's Cedric. I think that's Cedric Shaw down there. And it is said 
Harry Crowley will help him up, and uh, they're going to take him out for at least a play or two. Cedric's one of those guys like, like Fitzgerald. He didn't want to come off. He does not want to come off. He, he played injured last year. And Just to show what kind of player Cedric is, he hurt himself there throwing a block, trying to spring Demo for that, for the run after the catch. A lot of running backs pride themselves only on running, but Cedric's trying to be as complete a player as he can, throwing blocks downfield. Probably trying to make up for the drop pass. Yeah, trying to do a little bit of everything. 23 yards on the hookup, and the uh, Hawkeyes have it on the 30-yard line. 9.22 left, and rolling. Down seven. Berger, the lone setback. Tavian Banks now in the slot. They give it to Michael. He's got a nice hole, and he's a big boy inside the 15. It's a great job of scheming right there by Don Patterson. He knows that when he jumps that running back out of the backfield, it takes a defender out of the middle. So they know they're going to run a play up the middle, jump the running back out there to get one less defender in the middle. See how wide open the middle of the field is because Tavian <laughs> jumped out of the backfield there. Great call by Coach Patterson. First down and 10 for the Hawks on the 15-yard line. Dave Rader knows that the Hurricane has to come up with a stop here or it's all even. Banks once again moves out into the slot and Berger is the lone setback. Michael barrels inside 10. Picks up five. There's a little Haydenism there. Works once to one side, so run it again to the next side. Berger with a nice night. Seven carries for 57 yards. Very workmanlike performance, as usual, by an Iowa fullback. He comes out. Banks is in the backfield. They give it to Dave. And nothing there. No game. Brings up a huge play here. Oh, you're telling me. Wadon Vita Kazadi on the stop there. 55 in the middle of the screen. Look, look at that, Paul. Right Linebacker in the middle. Does a great job of filling right there, because otherwise there was a hole. Here we go here, third and five. Okay, Coach Burmeister, you, you coach a seventh grade team down in Iowa City. What do you do here with the, with the big college kids? On a seventh grade team, I call timeout. But <laughs> these guys here, Iowa, such a big part of their offense is a tight end, especially when they get down here into this area. They haven't shown that tonight. It'd be nice to see them try to get some around the ball. Third and five on the ten. Biggest play of the night for the Hawks. Sherman. Lost the football. He lost the football. Is that an incomplete pass? Is that a fumble? What are they going to call here? He certainly was in a throwing motion, or was about to be. And I, they're not going to give the football to Tulsa. We know that much. I think he was in the motion of throwing here. Oh, yeah, deflected, in Knocked fact. Down. Deflected, in fact. Incomplete. Hawkeyes are going to go for this one, folks. There's still 7.24 left in the game, but uh, this might be the play. Fourth and five. It's a formation. Iowa always passes the ball out of right here. Sherman, straight drop. Pressure, flushed out. Incomplete, intended for Tim Dwight in the end zone. Knocked away by Terrence Joseph, who's having a fantastic night in the secondary. Hawks got what they wanted to in the back end there. They got the man coverage in the back, but Tulsa's front seven does a great job of getting to Matt Sherman and ruining any chance they had. Get a guy coming untouched there and really throws it off. You see Timmy Dwight has a step on him, but with Matt rolling to his right across his body, 20 yards across the field, that's yeah. a tough ball for quarterback to throw. I tell you, with Tulsa defense is up to the task. Caden is uh, perplexed, bamboozled. Look, the look on his face tells the story tonight here from Skelly Stadium in Oklahoma. 7-17, Tulsa takes over on downs. Reggie picks up three. Once again, I, I you know, I, I I don't know if I'm, I'm picking the right thing here to, to, uh, to be critical of, but Tim Dwight had to kind of come back to that ball. And I don't, maybe it's tough to make that throw, but Dwight seems to be the kind of guy that just can get past folks. Uh, you know, it was a little bit tighter in that situation, but. Yeah, it's, it's a tough, tough ball to throw falling away. 
throwing to his right. But it's the type of throw I know Merritt expects himself to make, though, also. It's a frustrating night for the Hawkeyes. They have time to turn it around. Fitzgerald lost oh. it over. Oh, in and out of the hands of Matt Hughes. Matty had a chance for his first career interception, and he just, just couldn't hang on. You know, talking to Brett Bielma, the Iowa, the young Iowa linebacker coach before the game, he was talking about one of his linebackers getting an interception, getting the first one of the year, and they had a great opportunity for it right here, and what a time it would have been for it. Tell me if he couldn't have caught that one. Oh, goodness, right through his hands. Don't get opportunities like that very often. Third and seven. Hawkeyes need a stop. 6.35 left in this football game. Fitzgerald wants to throw. Here comes Jared DeVries, and he gets him. What a super play by 94. That's why Jared DeVries is such a great player. He hasn't had a great game by his standards tonight. It's the fourth quarter. I know he's tired. But this is a big play time. This is when big players step up and make the plays, and that's exactly what Jared DeVries is. Trips him off right at the one-yard line, and Fitzgerald was quickly ushered off the field by the trainers. This is one of the few poor plays that Fitzgerald has had all night. You get rid of this ball when you post to the goal line. You know, we're not there yet, Paul. Look at Fitzgerald. I mean, that's, he's been a warrior tonight. We're not there yet, but pretty soon we're going to get to the point where the Hawkeyes will need to score on a given drive. You know, they're, they're, we're under six minutes now here, and they could certainly give the ball away and get it back, but we're getting close to the danger zone where a, a touchdown is mandatory. Hawks are going to be in a great position here to have good field position. They only have about 35, 40 yards to go for the score. Demo Odoms at the Maybe Tulsa 40. That. Knifes through the middle and gets inside the 30-yard line. Now, this is just ideal field position for the Hawkeyes. Their best of the night by far. Can't ask for much better to start the drive on the, the opposing 29-yard line. You don't have a whole lot of drives. You only need 29 yards to go for the score. Actually, only 28. hasn't had a great night so far, but he can make all that forgotten about if he drives the Hawks to, to a, a score here and a victory. No one's going to remember the fact that he didn't play as well as he would have liked. All they remember is the fact that he was a winner tonight. They didn't expect to be here, but this is a defining moment for the Hawkeyes early in this 96 season. Cedric Shaw trying to do everything, and a great tackle from behind by Jeremy Bunch, who, uh, I mean, he's played like a bunch tonight. We were kind of kidding earlier that their leading tackler was their free safety. And maybe that was a reflection of their defense, but I think it's more a reflection after seeing him tonight of what a good open field tackler he is. Cedric is not the easiest guy in the world to get in this situation. Although he had a lot of help with his friends there. It wasn't a true open field situation. There's the story. Tulsa is on the verge of uh, one of their biggest victories in a long, long time. This would be something else. The Hawkeyes know they're not going to blow out Tulsa. It's way too late for that. They just want to win this football game. And Sherman is going to call a timeout. The end of this football game should be exciting, folks, one way or the other. Tulsa leading Iowa 20-37 to play. Sherman wants to pass. Zaron Flemister. Inside the 20, first down, Hawkeyes. Mentioned earlier what a big part of the passing offense ride where the tight end has been throughout the years. We haven't seen him at all tonight. He knew somehow or another the tight end would work his way in on a big play. Nothing fancy here, just a tight end across the field, wide open. Lemister, the big freshman out of Sioux City. Last time he touched the football, it was a catch against Iowa State, and he fumbled it this time. The young kid, the big kid, held on for the biggest first down of the night for Iowa. Great read, great delivery right there by Matt Sherman. Fourth reception of the year for the freshman, first and 10 on Tulsa's 14-yard line. Cedric Shaw. Nothing there. Twenty-five left now. Hawkeyes once again, second and long. Same situation they were a series of downs ago. Wadon Vita Kazadi and his Tulsa teammates 
hoping to contain that man and his group. Sherman under center, second and ten. Hawkeyes trail by seven. Dwight in motion. Sherman, deep drop all the way back to the 24, dumps it off. Michael Berger has it inside the 10. They'll face a third down here. It was a great job by Matt Sherman, realizing that it's open downfield. No one his back is there to dump to. That's a play right there. It doesn't look too tough, but that's what's made Iowa quarterbacks great in the past. Chuck Hartley, Chuck Long, Matt Rogers, they all use their dumps, their tight ends, their fullbacks checking underneath the coverage to get their yards. Third and six now for Iowa. They converted on the last third down opportunity. They have not had a good night overall on third down. We all know that by now. 3.17 left in the game. Sherman still has it, rolling out. Looking for Berger, incomplete. Michael had a shot at catching that football. I, Sherman, I could see him from here, is a little bit upset, but the throw was a tad low. That's a play right there where I know right now both players feel like it was their fault. Definitely a pass that Mike Berger could come, come up with, but Matt Sherman, I know, expects himself to make a little better throw than that. He leaves it behind him a little bit. Oh, should have caught it, but I also think Matt probably should have thrown a little better ball. Got to go. You got to go. Fourth and five on the nine. Damon Gibson, Tavian Banks in the slot on the right side, Dwight on the left side, Berger in the backfield. Look out, Matt. Incomplete. Huge pressure applied from behind by Rich Young. And Tulsa has the football. They are practically celebrating a victory right now. Matt Sherman is just out on the turf at the 24. He is not getting up. Jeremy Bunch is already high-fiving the fans. Young with a huge defensive play. Untouched, Paul. That's a situation right there where the shoulder coming down on that turf. Watch Matt's right shoulder right here. Well, that's where Carl Bounds' shoulders go out right there. It happened to Ryan Driscoll a season and a half ago against Indiana. Matt, look, he looks a little woozy, that's for sure, and they are holding that right shoulder. He slowly comes off the field. He won't be needed for now anyway because Tulsa has the football, folks, with three minutes and six seconds to go. Hart really goes out to Matt Sherman right there, knowing what he's going through right now. Not only the pain, but the disappointment of how this game has gone. Defense right now really needs to step it up and come up with a big play. The only way I was going to get back in this game is if they stick him here or get a turnover. It's the only chance they have at this point. Keep in mind, fans, Iowa out of timeouts. They have no timeouts remaining. And Troy DeGar is in at quarterback now for Tulsa. Solomon White, flags fly. Jared DeVries misses him. And he steps out a yard shy of the first down. Got a flag down the field and also looks like an injured Iowa player as well back on about the eight-yard line. Yes. Damian, Damian Robinson. Damian Robinson is down, holding his right ankle. Sherman has been knocked around. Cedric Shaw has pulled himself out of the ball game. Damon Robinson is now favoring his right ankle. Hopefully it's just a cramp. Might have gotten rolled up a little bit there on the ankle. His blocker went low and did something to Damien's left ankle. We'll wait for the official's notification of what the penalty is. I, I really don't have an idea. The illegal shift on the offense, half the distance penalty, still first down. So it'll still be first down for Tulsa, but they are moved back to the uh, four-yard line, and it'll be uh, first and 15. Under three minutes to play. Iowa has had more penalties called against them tonight. It's also just three for 15 yards, and Degar is under center. Hawkeyes with everybody up front. They got eight men on the line of scrimmage. 
Reggie Williams somehow gets through those eight guys and takes it out to the 15-yard line. I just don't understand how, how that can be happening. Iowa has had a solid defense in the first two games, and they had eight guys there. Defensive line just got moved out of the way here by Tulsa's offensive line. Simple as that. Watch the hole here as you see what the running back sees. Nothing there but the referee. Definitely not what the Hawks are looking for in this situation. Defense is playing with their heads down a little bit. They need to pick it up and realize that their only chance to win this game is if they come up with a big play or a turnover. They're running out of opportunities to give Tulsa first downs. I mean, they're going to need to stop them soon. The clock is running. 2.15 left. Second and four. Reggie Williams. A nice effort, but he is going to be shy of the first down, I believe, by less than a yard. If Iowa doesn't hold him here on this third down, I think if Tulsa gets it with Iowa out of timeouts, I don't think they can get the ball back if they don't I stop agree him with right you. here. Tulsa has been good at third down conversions all night, and most of them have been a lot longer than 18 inches, which appears to be the distance they need to go here. Third and less than one. Iowa out of timeouts. The clock is running with 135. This, in all effect, is the play of the game. If the guard is going to call a timeout. The Hawkeyes are... There's not a lot of communication out there right now on the defensive side for the Hawkeyes. They know what they're facing right now, and Tulsa still has a timeout left. They shouldn't need one. Keep in mind, if Iowa does stop here, and they pull out a 90-second miracle and tie this football game or come to within a point, do you go for two, just like uh, you and Scott Slutsker did in 93? Uh, do you kick the extra point and play the new overtime, which was instituted by the NCAA this year? But uh, we might as well not even talk about that because they uh, have to stop 18 inches here for by Tulsa. We were thinking about that a bit earlier, but they could not convert there inside the 15. In the old days, Coach Fry definitely would have gone for it without the uh, overtime rule. I know he hates to, tie, to play in a tie ball game. There we go. Third and less than a yard. DeGar wants to keep it, and I'm not sure yet, folks. I am not sure yet. If I had to, if I had to guess, I would say, uh-uh. Tulsa is not acting like they had it, and uh, it's going to be fourth down. Fourth down in inches. Do they punt, Paul? They got to punt, don't they? Or are they just going to try to sneak it again here? If I'm Tulsa, I might just go back and, and take the safety, give them the three points, and that way they can pin them even deeper in Iowa territory because you risk a blocked punt here. And really change here by both teams. Two points doesn't make any kind of difference in the outcome. They are going to punt. Clock running. 46 seconds left in the game. Tim Dwight and... Uh, Demo Odoms back to receive Kirk Myrick's punt. He's standing at the five. Heavy pressure. Myrick gets it away, and it's a good one. It's a good one. Dwight on the 31. Timmy up the middle and contained at the 45-yard line. There are no timeouts left for Iowa. They will stop the clock here. 26 seconds left. Now what, Paul? This is where you don't want to be the offensive coordinator. Um, Tough spot to be in right here because the defense is probably going to be only rushing three people and dropping eight guys to cover that deep pass. And I was really going to have to be lucky here to get something going downfield. Tulsa has never beaten the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Iowa Hawkeyes have never lost to Tulsa. 2-0, and 0-2. And tonight might be the night that the Golden Hurricane pulls it off. 26 seconds remaining. Demo Odoms and Tim Dwight are the wide receivers. Berger and Banks in the backfield. Tavian out into the slot. Sherman drops back. He does have time. Fires to Tim Dwight, and it was just thrown too much to the outside. Incomplete, but that does stop the clock. They're obviously going to keep throwing to the outsides here, near the sideline. Uh, 
20 seconds left, second and 10. Wally Wright and the referee walks in there. Talking with someone else on the crew and now we play football. Sherman in the pocket, going long, intended for Tim Dwight, knocked away by Terrence Joseph. Clock stopped with 13 seconds. Folks, here comes our Hardee's play of the game, brought to you by your local Hardee's, and we have to give it to the Golden Hurricane from Tulsa. They were up 2017, and they added to it with Solomon White's hard-nosed run into the end zone to put the Hurricane up 27-17. They have held that lead. And if you're an Iowa fan, you hope that the Hardys play of the game isn't truly the Hardys play of the game. This is where Sherman needs to make like uh, Cordell Stewart. Tim Dwight needs to make like uh, Michael Westbrook. He's got Richard Carter. He throws the ball away. They've got to get it out of bounds. They do with... They didn't get it out in time. They did not get it out in time, and this football game is over. Tulsa is celebrating their biggest victory in years. Never has a Big Ten football team come to Skelly Stadium. They do tonight in the Iowa Hawkeyes, and the Golden Hurricane pull off the upset. Guys lose 27-20. We'll be back to wrap things up after this message from your local station. The Hawkeyes 27-20, perhaps the uh, biggest victory in Golden Hurricane history. If it's not, it sure feels like it for those Tulsa players tonight. For Paul Burmeister, my broadcast partner, fine job done. Producer Bob Helmers and the rest of the creative sports crew. So long from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma.